today is the next girlfriend of mine's birthday. That's why I get the two of those confused. Gotcha. We used to go one, two, three. And then we'd all be like, we should just have one party. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, uh, yeah, tomorrow is uh, New Year, and uh, you can still vote on all the stuff for uh, comedy of the year. That's uh, Comedian of the Year, uh, Comedy Movie of the Year, Best Hour Special, Best Comedy Book, Best Comedy TV Show. Um, it's all up there. Best Comedy Album. That was a big, oh, jeez. Nobody knows what direct. There's so many albums now. So many to choose from. Everybody always says, are you going to make an album? I'm like, why? Why make an album? Why do a special? I think you should make an album, but only make it an album. It should just only come out on vinyl. I love a physical the album. Cool kids yeah. have it. <laughs> and then, like, years from now, my great-great-grandchildren go, this is the way they used to put out albums mm -hmm. in 2020. But I'm, I might even make a double album like that just to make it ridiculously big. <laughs> 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 Every once in a while, somebody would make a triple album, but I don't think they ever did well. I don't think... Too uh, heavy. Yeah, and then it became <laughs> box sets, which I went out. You, you get the Dylan box set? Yeah, the box set. Uh, just always, to me, like very like a gift. Right. I got you the box set. Yeah. You know how you love that thing? You got everything. You got it. everything. <laughs> you want this, you want that. They got it. It's all in the box set. Yes. They got the Modern Lovers box set. <laughs> you listen to the whole thing? No, just the one song. No, the one I like. <laughs> yeah. But if I needed anything else, it's, it's all, all there. there. I like to show it off. I like to have my box set sitting mm -hmm. up so when people come in, they see my box set. I have set. a whole shelf just for the box set. Good. You know, so Smart. if you're like, uh, here are my albums, here's everything I got, here are my box sets. You know, these are the bands I really like. Are you able to listen to albums as much as you used to because of Young Juju? Nope. Because uh, it used to be something I used to do that was a relaxing time yeah. and a ritualistic time and a, a time for myself. And those times don't exist anymore. They don't exist. And I wasn't anticipating that. Yeah. I wasn't anticipating the only time I can listen to music is something silly for her to dance and I'm going to have to put it on Spotify or something. Go and vote. Uh, all the stuff is up there uh, today. Uh we're going to jump into a couple of different things. Uh, the Big Gossip Awards, uh, which is always fun. And the Remarkable Achievements in Comedy Awards. That's always fun. I'm also uh, loving the stuff that, they, that the clubs all around the country say is their favorite oh, thing. Oh, yes, that the clubs all. speak. Yeah. I always like the smaller the market, the more they get excited about stuff that we see every day. Right. You know what I mean? The whole, Ari Shafir dropped in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. You know? That does sound nice. By the way, GPS is this Saturday, and that is Detroit, that Detroit rock scene that we all love that because of Motown is not appreciated enough yes. how much really big thick hard rock came out of detroit as well that's one of my favorite uh gps's there's just fantastic songs on that one yeah just really great songs and 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 a music scene that uh kind of got copied for the next 10 12 years at least i mean they were they were kind of doing the big arena sound even yeah. before people had big arena rock um and the the creeps are going to detroit go to uh creepstour.com for tickets you know, with this new uh, dieting, uh, Robert Kelly, uh, I don't know what you're going to get by the time he gets there. You think he could possibly be hangry even? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know because I see his diet and I saw an enormous baked potato smothered <laughs> in avocado. What diet in, is that? Potato I, diet. It's uh, a diet that keeps him filled. And he <laughs> seems to have packed his life with healthy snacks. <laughs> Just nonstop healthy snacking uh he hates uh veto for proving it could be done yeah. he, he really fucking really despises does. any pretty veto pick the the pretty veto picks that you took had him enraged yeah enraged. and i took some really beautiful ones yeah. yeah i was very proud of those photos yeah it's very very true uh veto looked like he could have been in duran duran if you know what i mean <laughs> if the timeline would have came out differently go vote at the i bang all the comedy uh in the year stuff and uh, um 
Thank God that uh, we're getting rid of this shit can go fuck a bum year of 2019. (laughs) And we're on into everything rules in 2020. Yeah. 2020. I mean, don't you like the love it? It's It's my favorite TV show. (laughs) I feel like Barbara Walters this year. Uh, All right. Let's uh, jump into it. Oh, Benning, uh, Bennington on Mass with Colin Quinn later oh, today. Oh, great. One of the Love greatest. That one. one. of the greatest of all time. And quite frankly, might be a, a comedian of the decade. Yeah. Said an unbelievable, unbelievable decade. And you can uh, have an effect on that if you go to the iBang. Yeah. Vote for him if you feel so strongly. Um, all right, Bennington. Now, the funniest comedians working today tell us who they think will be the breakout star of 2020. The legendary and hilarious Dave Attell picks his breakout comedian of 2020. My big pick for 2020, I'd say Andrew Yang is a long shot, but he's a good man. Oh, wait, comics. Let's see. Ah, uh, boy, that's a tough one. I've been working with two guys over the last couple of years. They are awesome, and I think both of them deserve a break, and I want good things for both of them. One would be Big Ian, Ian Fidance, and uh, Louis Katz. So check them both out. And, uh, you know, I'm an old comic. What do I know? But I know funny, and I think these guys are super funny, so check it out. Next up, we have Dan Soder, Best Hour Special nominee. Uh, and if you haven't uh, watched it yet, Son of a Gary is on HBO. Let's see who he's picking as his breakout comedian of 2020. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Dan Soder for my breakout comedian of 2020. I'm picking a guy I already picked before, Shane Gillis. But I think he's breaking back out again. They locked him up and he's going to break out. Is that how this works? Right? This works. I think that's a good call. Now let the complaint tweets begin. And of course, we've got to go next to Big J Okerson. Big J, who are you picking as your breakout comedian of 2020? I think the breakout comic of the year 2020 is going to be, I mean, it's no doubt in my mind. It's, it's not even a guess here. It's obvious. Shane the Young Bull Gillis. What? Oh. Ari Shafir, check out his podcast, Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank. Who is he going to pick as his breakout comedian of 2020? Hey, this is Ari Shafir. I believe that the breakout comedian of 2020 will be a tie between Dave Chappelle, Michelle Wolf, Louis C.K., and Bill Burr, and maybe Joe Rogan also. I think those guys are ready to be primed for stardom. I think people are ready to finally know their names. I think that's why this year, those guys are going to be the ones you hear about. Also, again, Luis Gomez will not be a star. And also, for real, I think this seems like a kiss-up move. But for real, I think Bennington has a chance to, like, start getting a name this year as, like, a legit stand-up comic. Let's see. It'll be interesting. And Bobby Kelly will die of a heart attack in 2023. And coming up, it's the biggest scandals in comedy in 2019. Follow along at the iBang with the Benningtons. And now, here are your nominees for the 2019 Biggest Scandal of the Year. It is the year in comedy. Go over to the iBang.com. That's the interrobang.com. And vote for all the different year-end awards. Comedian of the Year, Stand-Up Special of the Year, TV Show of the Year. It's all there. Vote early, vote often, and send it out to your friends and send it out to the people who are nominated. Uh, And you can also go to the Interrobang to check out a fantastic dish. It's 2019's Caddy Everyone is Gossiping About You Award. This is, uh, you know, kind of the, the biggest uh, the biggest gossips of the year. It's what everybody was chit-chatting about. You want to be one of the comedians that people are talking about, mm-hmm. whether it's good or bad. It all comes back to being good for your brand. Let's go to Earl Douglas. You first. What's the big gossip story for you? For me, it was Bill Cosby compare, <laughs> trying to compare himself to Martin Luther King as he serves time for rape charges. 
Um, don't you think he is the Martin Luther King of today, since Martin Luther King allegedly was accused of rape? I don't. I know he had affairs, but I know there was a, never a rape allegation. Forced, <laughs> forced. He I certainly th- was not convicted like Mr. Cosby was. Mm. Convicted by who? The man. <laughs> You know, Earl, you hate the Phils, you hate the Eagles, you hate the Sixers. Of course you're going to hate Bill Cosby. I respected Cosby until recently, until all the rape allegations came forward. He broke my heart, and I I cannot... I can't believe that your heart was with Bill Cosby. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm not saying heartbroken in the sense that it was... The pudding, he, you had the pudding. <laughs> the man was an icon. He, had, you know, had a great family. He did not have to drug and rape women. No, at all, ever. Who does then? <laughs> you know, people who can't get laid. <laughs> yeah, you know? um, sometimes you have to. Uh, Vito, what do you got? Uh, mine was when Dina Hashem made a joke about rapper XXX Tentacion, and um, just. Enraged every single one of his fans to the point she got death threats. Um, she actually went and pulled herself off the show that was going to air uh, that night. I mean, her joke was the, you know, was the selling point of that show. She says, "Look, take me off the show, take it down." She stepped back a little bit and then, you know, just went back to work. I know her. She's a very soft-spoken, very funny, but she's not a controversial person. (laughs) (laughs) And for this thing to hit her, and you know the death threat things, it changes a little bit when you're a young woman on the road. Sure. You know what I mean? It's not... It's going to be a concern. Right. Um, Yeah, I mean, that that reaction was absolutely insane, and it's particularly funny if if you know her... Her disposition. Yes, her stand-up is just very, uh, you know, kind of centered. You know, if you're going to give uh, Chris Stanley uh, a death threat, you're going to get what he always says. Come at me, bro. <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> Bring it, bro. But it's different when it's a young woman. And I, I, I honestly thought to myself, I'm a little concerned. I hope she's, you know, taking care of everything. But it looks like she handled it perfectly. Nice kid. Yeah. Very funny kid. Uh, for me, I've got to say one of the biggest stories would be Louis C.K.'s drop-in at Skank Fest. Uh, you know, the reaction in the room versus the reaction afterwards, uh, you know, it kind of shows you the difference between the comedy audience who shows up and kind of what catches word. Uh, and then, you know, kind of that, that whole fallout between the Skanks and Brooklyn Bazaar. It was very dramatic. Well, you know, Louis J. Gomez also made it bigger than it needed to be. You know what I mean? Like he turned around and fought with every single person who had a beef and uh, Brooklyn Bazaar, you know, dropped out of it. But, you know, the truth is I hear from everybody that when Louis goes out, he's treated the same way he was at Skankfest. Uh, But the online community is the one that has the biggest beef. In a lot of ways, you're saying, thinking him going out, playing the people who are buying tickets to see him is less controversial than him doing a drop-in at the cellar. Yeah. You know? Uh, Yeah, because, you know, obviously that's more of a risk. You don't know the react. You don't know that these are your fans. These are just people who came to see comedy and they may or may not be, uh, you know, leading one way or the other. Uh, but absolutely, you know, I, I think it's it's proven that he he has an audience. He has sure. a market, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ellen taking the selfie with George W. Bush uh, at the Cowboys game. Yeah, her... That was the biggest uh, news of the year 2000. See what I did there? <laughs> That's the last time either one of them mattered to me. <laughs> In the year 2000. <laughs> uh, you know, I would have said Shane Gillis was the big story this year uh because i've never seen anybody get fired before they showed up to work the first day yeah you know what i mean uh and i thought it was really unfair and and i said it then and i'll say it now i think that people should have just seen and judged him by saturday night live and and lorne michaels and if he did something that offended you then you know that's big time but before this it's a podcast that nobody was listening to. Um, but 
the the comic that stays in the news all the time. There's no doubt about this. Pete Davidson is in about eight of the stories. Who he's dating is important. What he says to an audience. How much he uh, uh, threatens to sue an audience for. <laughs> um, he's managed to do that thing that is hard to do. Is to get on page six, live there. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that, uh, you know, every week we do a segment on Bennington uh, where we do Dish with Cashmere. Right. And I'm pretty sure every week there is a Pete Davidson story. Right. Almost every week we've had it. Um, so, yeah, whether it's d dating or whatever controversy, he's and, always in the news. And like, I don't know who Dave Chappelle what wife is. You know what I mean? I don't know who Sam Minaj is dating or married. I don't know. Yeah. And yet, every time Pete takes somebody else out to dinner, I see a picture of it. I can't stay away from it. So he really is the gossip king. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. uh, and let's remember, he's not even a major player on Saturday Night Live. He doesn't even <laughs> attempt to do a lot of characters. No. Yeah. I think he could be, but uh, I think uh, he doesn't have the best attendance record. No, he doesn't. <laughs> And he's got a movie coming out with Judd Apatow, and it seems like uh, people are going to be paying attention to him for a long time. All right, back to comedians telling us who they think the breakout comedians of 2020 are. And now, the funniest comedians working today tell us who they think will be the breakout star of 2020. Okay, let's go over to Paul Verzi of the Verzi Effect podcast. Let's see who he's going to pick for his breakout comedian of 2020. I think the comedian that's going to break out in 2020 is Aaron Weber, hilarious comedian from uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, worked with him, kills, and he's just, for a comic that's young, he's just got it, and I think he's going to turn into a monster, so look out for Aaron Weber. Shane Torres Check out his dates at shaneisacomedian.com, picking his breakout comedian of 2020. My breakout comedian of 2020 is going to be Tom Takar. His half hour dropped this past year. He's getting booked more, and he's got some other exciting stuff on the horizon. So give him a listen and listen to his podcast, Stand By Your Band. Next up, we have our buddy Avery Pearson. Go check out ComedyGivesBack.com uh, for his song and video uh, with a, a great bunch of comics. Howie Mandel, Jim Jeffries, Brad Williams, Adam Ray, Adam Devine, the Sklar Brothers. Go check it out. Uh, and let's listen now as he picks his breakout comedian of next year. I think the breakout comedian of 2020 will be Jade. Kata, Prada, my friend, and hilarious comedian. I love her. She's done um, a ton of television, Californication, just a, a bunch of stuff. But now she's going to be the host of The Soup. And I can't think of anyone that would do a better job. She's hysterical. She's fun. She's cool. You know, she once got my wife a purse when my wife didn't have a purse. So think about that. Anyone who needs a purse, she's the right person to head up. Uh, but yes, the breakout comedian of 2020, I'm calling it Jade Kata Prada. Well, of course, we have to wrap this up with one of our favorites every year. It's Bobby Kelly. Go to creepstour.com to see the dates of 2020, uh, where he's touring with Ron Bennington, Jim Florentine, and Rich Voss. Let's listen to Bobby Kelly picking his breakout comedian of 2020. My name is Robert Kelly, and my pick for breakout comic of the year is Jeff Stone. I think Jeff Stone is going to be the guy that pops out. And everybody's going, who? It's not even like you heard of him. It's like people, I'm picking somebody that most of you guys pick somebody who everybody's kind of heard of. Who they're kind of like, yeah, that's a good pick. That's probably who it's going to be. I'm picking like the underneath the underdog. I'm picking the guy like nobody even knows. Like you've walked by in the street and didn't even know. Was, you had a comedy club and he was sitting down and you didn't know he was a comic. Funny, married, probably half uh, homosexual. And he, which is great for now because he's Italian 
he's got the, you know, uh, some type of background. He's, you know, uh, he's bi. So that goes good. That's what all the networks are looking for. You know, some type of, some type of, they, they have a couple of boxes to check. And he's got them. So that's who it is. Jeff Stone. Is, Max, I'm on the phone. She's none of your business. She wanna, She got to go to do something. She'll be right back. Yeah, what did you just say? God, you don't say God dang it. What are you doing? What, you got yeah, poopy? You have poopy in your bum? I'm on the phone. I'm trying. Oh, I'm going to take everybody home from Aruba. You want to go back to, you want to go back to cold New York? Max, who do you think is going to be the breakout comic of the year? Oh, daddy. Thank you. I bet you nobody's ever said that. Wait, I think. What? Yeah, go think over there. You already you already had your shot. See it. Oh, Hello. All right. I, Ray Allen? Get out of here. Take him out of there. Okay. So there you go. There's my pick. I hope you guys like it. And Vito, I can't wait to eat chubby again. Come on, Bobby. We all know. His, His name, name is Greg Stone. Stone. His, His name is Greg Stone. Stone. His, His name, name is Greg Stone. Stone. Coming up next is the award for remarkable achievements in comedy stick around and now here are the awards for remarkable achievement of exceptional noteworthiness in unrelated categories in 2019 it's the year in comedy awards every year the i band gives out some special awards Uh, Like this one. This is the fourth annual Colin Quinn for Twitter Excellence Award. Because it's hard to really be good on Twitter. Uh, The first year, of course, it went to Colin Quinn and then was named after him. Bonnie McFarlane won it the second year. And then Adrian Iappolucci picked it up next year. And I'm proud to say the recipient this year is a person with a great special Jessica Kirsten. Yes, Jessica. Jessica! I'm a huge fan of her Twitter. She's so funny. Her. So funny. Yeah. Uh, she does stuff with the guy who uh, opens up for her and their really good friends, Frank. And he's got real acting chops and they're hilarious together. They're just <laughs> right. so funny. Um, here's another one, I think. Uh, the... Um, Old School Keeping the Tabloids Alive Award. Uh, it went from Alec Baldwin last year to this year's Pete Davidson. Um, and yet, I'll say this, Kevin Hart had an amazing <laughs> year. When I heard that in the car accident, he got out of the car, <laughs> left two people behind, and went back to his house. <laughs> I think it's the most Philly thing that I've ever heard of. <laughs> I mean, it goes to show it doesn't matter how successful that you are. Your early Philly DNA will come back. <laughs> um, the worst trend in comedy, this uh, was talked about a lot, but it's the fact that there's as many albums out this year as podcasts. We've gotten to the point where you can't listen to everybody's podcast. And yet they act like you've heard it. They're like, oh, did you hear my last podcast? You're like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, but there's a cra- we know so many people with uh, albums out this yeah. year. It's nuts. And the reason is, is not because people are buying albums. The reason is, is that you can stream and have a... Uh, a revenue um, coming in. Now, what is funny now is the people that have albums out are not going to get as many streams as they did before because there's albums out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, if you went back and you were like, I don't know, Dennis Miller, you've probably been seeing a nice check coming your way. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I like this one as well, guys. Uh, this is the most unlikely friendship of the year. And it's Seinfeld taking Mark Norman under his wing. <laughs> Who would have no thought? One, no one saw this coming. I'd like to see them in some sort of a buddy movie. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Mark Norman could play the uh, the penguin tomorrow. <laughs> um, there's a thing up. I don't know whether you can find it, Chris, but it's Seinfeld with Mark Norman. They are dressed the same in a Reservoir Dogs kind of suit, 
and then they both run off the stage in the same way. Now, I'll say this. I've seen Mark Norman perform many times. I've seen him come on stage. I've seen him walk off stage. At no time. Have I ever seen him run? <laughs> it's unusual to see one guy run off stage. Yeah, I I would think uh, it would be rare, right? Like, why? What would be the reasoning for like a full on run? Uh, I think it's just his. Uh, I think it's just Seinfeld's personality, and now it's Mark Norman's personality. Can't find it, huh, Chris? Can't find it. Well, you gave it a good try. That's the. Uh, that's that's all we really asked in this. Uh, in this business uh it's the year end in comedy it's all uh happening folks and it's uh it's an exciting year but thank god 2019 is over yeah i'm done with it it's 2020 (laughs) bring it on that's it you can go to the ibank and vote for comedian of the year you can vote for comedy special you can vote for movie comedy movie comedy tv show album of the year it's all there make sure you vote try to get your friends involved tweet it out and share it and uh share with the comedians that are nominated thank you everybody happy 2020 to you how come earl douglas didn't pick the race i told him $60 $60 million payroll, and they're beating the shit out of the uh, defending champs. They go up against the Yankees next? Uh, game five is tomorrow night. Wait, I thought it was over. No, it's not over. It's 2-2. With the Rays? Yeah, the Rays are 2-2. I Everybody's thought they 2-2. fucking won last night. Fuck. The kid had me all confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. I'll tell you this. I think they'll, if they play the Yanks, they think they'll sweep them in four. Really? Yeah. Uh. That's my today's unpopular <laughs> opinion. I was watching Jim Jeffrey's show last night, and they were doing unpopular opinions. And then the audience was voting on it. I was oh, crap. I love that. I, I, I love it when somebody fucking hates one of them. Reminded me of you, Gail, because it just said fuck watermelon, right? Yeah. So 75% of the people disagreed. But then I'm like, 25% of people don't like watermelon? (laughs) That's like to me saying people don't like to breathe. God, I didn't know I had so many brothers and sisters. I'm shocked. (laughs) I mean, I can't imagine. I've always felt alone. You are alone, in my opinion. I've always felt everyone in my family loves it. My baby loves it. It's like her second favorite food. It's a human is going to love oranges. Yeah, delicious. Uh, bananas mm-hmm. and melon. Across the board, most people would say that. I know some people who don't like cantaloupe, and I'm like, you're a fucking idiot, man. It's almost like when you hear like people like, oh, I don't like cashews. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's pretty standard. It's just like a good. I'm always shocked with this. Tape. I know people. Who don't like eggs? Eggs. Yeah. Yes. This is a standard. This is like saying, no, I don't like toast. Right. I, I don't like don't potato. Understand. I don't like egg. I don't like toast. Would all be in the same category. It's I, just like, well, that's just sustenance. It just feels good to the body. Um, maybe we'll play unpopular opinion. If you have an unpopular opinion, give us a call. 844-ROCK-GOD. 844-ROCK-GOD. I'll say this. If enough people agree with your unpopular opinion will send you to the pretty good prize oh nice but you can't be up like i don't like the devil that's a popular opinion right exactly he's a sly old fox here's one that came up uh halloween is overrated people disagreed they voted it down by like 68 percent right fucking adults love halloween they love halloween they're turning every holiday into halloween I mean, I really like Halloween, but I don't feel like I'm running around like a little kid. I just like the season. Well, I love the season. Yeah. But dressing up for Halloween? No. Not going to do it. <laughs> not going to do it. I'm an adult. And quite frankly, I don't expect to get candy. You know what I mean? I can afford my own candy. <laughs> Whatever true. you want. Any day of the year. Yeah. Any day. This way you'd, you can... be, you'd be shocked how often I don't do it. So you like to pick your candy rather than to have strangers pick it for you. Right. And give you a way too small amount. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to get excited because someone threw a Jolly Rancher in a bag. <laughs> oh, but God. At that point to me, when I was a kid, that would have been garbage to me. 
All right, I want to go to Vito Calise, who's got a big party coming up on Thursday night. Everybody, watch Cash Cab. Vito uh, Calise and his uh, ethnically diverse hipster <laughs> friends <laughs> are in the Cash That's Cab. Cool. We've known this for a while. You weren't allowed to say it, and also... You didn't know whether you would get in. Yeah, I we filmed, we got into the cab, the lights went off, and then they told us you can't say anything until you get an air date. And then we didn't even get an air date until after we were in a trailer. And they didn't even let us know about the trailer. Yeah, I, I don't think that the contestants are a big deal to them. <laughs> They've used you for what they needed so far. Um... I thought that you might get fucked because I've done so many shows with Ben Bailey and he's been in here. And I thought they might think that's a cheap. But the lucky thing is not like you're winning a trip to Europe. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And by the way, let me just say this. If you have a good game show, no one cares about the prize. You know what I mean? No. Like yeah. password, you just want to win password. But, you know, who wants to be a millionaire? You're like, oh, I want a million. Like if password, if anyone left with $1,000... It probably would have been a record. But if someone <laughs> says, I'm stopping at $250,000 on Millionaire, you're like, what a dick. Let's fucking go for it, What dude. a fucking moron. <laughs> yeah, we all agreed, like, we all agreed early on that if the double or nothing came up, it didn't, we were just so excited to be in the cab, it was like, just fucking take it. Yes, of it. course. Yeah. Anyone who doesn't take the double or nothing is hated by the uh, cowards, uh, Ron. Oh, the yeah. home audience. <laughs> the whole point. You're there. You yeah. have the experience. You have the chance. You'll never have this chance and again. You're not losing any money out of your pocket. Right. It's not a gamble. Right. That's not your money. It's like people are like, I came back from Vegas. I had $140. You're like, well, who cares? <laughs> Why'd you even go then? Come back with nothing. That's better. Uh,. Papa George said this, wrote to us on um, the Twitter tweets. Downton Abbey is boring. I'm going to say most people would think that. Yeah. Yes. It's not watched by half the country. Yes. I, I don't think that that's a good example because you're only insulting uh, the small group who enjoy it, me personally. Right. Uh, but I don't think it's for everyone. It's right. not like, oh, this is the number one show. Yes. You got to be big to get in on this. Uh, before we go to the phones, 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD, Vito Calise, give us an unpopular opinion. I've never liked a BLT because I just thought it was burger toppings. Well, first of all, that's a hilarious fucking... <laughs> I mean, if I had a restaurant, I would call it a burger toppings <laughs> sandwich. But anyone who doesn't like a BLT is insane to I me. Love a BLT. I, I love mean, a BLT. I mean, it's bacon and mayonnaise with some crunchy lettuce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mayo? Fucking delicious. It's just the best. Yes. Everything about it is It just good. feels like it's missing the main... Like, it feels... Well, look, is... you can make it better with a turkey. Yes. But it's a BLT. It's nothing to turn down. Right. We disagree with you, Vito. No You're prize closet. Disagreed. For you, Vito. It is so unpopular. All right, Gil. Let's go. All right, let's fun. jump in with Carlin in Ohio. You're on Bennington. What is your unpopular opinion? I think that Led Zeppelin is shite, and all their songs sound exactly alike. Now, uh, hmm. I'm not the biggest Led Zeppelin fan in the world. Yet I will not attack a good portion of their songs. I mean, you can't tell me that rock and roll isn't a great song. Going to California is a great song. Um, that whole, I got a one, one with ball all day. Yeah. Black Dog is a great yeah. song. And I like all the, the fucking fantastical ones because I like Lord of the Rings. He, yeah. They're talking about Sauron. I'm like, oh, my ears peak. I get really embarrassed <laughs> by that. I, I get ridiculous. really embarrassed by that. Uh, but no, I don't no. think we. I mean, you could say I don't like them, but you can't say they're not a good group. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's an unpopular opinion for a reason. Uh, Kristen in Rhode Island. Hi. Um, yeah, I hate Christmas music. 100% wow, of Christmas good. music. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I actually, I enjoy Carol of the Bells, and that's, that's, that's literally That's one that it. I do hate. <laughs> now, I would say this. I don't think that we need wall-to-wall -wall Christmas sure. music for six weeks. No, I know. We don't. <laughs> there are some great Christmas songs. A majority stink. Yes, there's a lot of bad Christmas songs, but I'm going to say disagree because when I'm ready for the season and I'm in the mood... 
I enjoy listening to it for a very short period of time. It's not the length that they force it down your throat. While I'm wrapping presents, I'm happy to listen to some Christmas. I'm going to say this. Uh, I'm going to agree with her because we don't get it for that short amount of time. Right. It starts before Thanksgiving. Yep. And again, 90% of it is terrible. I have some of my favorite songs are Christmas songs, but that's a one percenter. Chris Daniel. Uh Christmas music has been ruined. I agree with her. Vito Calise. I appreciate the support. Yeah. <laughs> Vito? I disagree with her because I like to hear Christmas music, even if it's a bad one. I usually will listen. You're going to lose your spot with us because that's an insane thing to say. It's two to two. Two to two. There's only one person that could break this. Um, the man who's dreaming of a black Christmas. <laughs> the great black girl, Let's Douglas. See. Christmas music is the worst. And I'm so oh, mad. Oh, Kristen, you get it. Pretty good prize closet. Pretty good pride oh. closet. Yeah. Get something Christmassy, I think. Now, uh, one of the reasons that Earl hates it is working in radio. He was pushed out of a job six weeks out of the year because they'll no. flip some of the stations to straight Christmas. Yeah, I had to do 12-hour shifts of playing it. I lost my mind. Let me tell you something, though. In New York City, when they would do that, right, they would sell so much inventory because it was playing in all the fucking stores and everybody, you know, that it started to be... So oh, oh, Kristen, you get pretty it. Good prize closet. Pretty good pride closet. Yeah. Get it something Christmassy, I think. Now, uh, one of the reasons that Earl hates it is working in radio. He was pushed out of a job six weeks out of the year because they'll <laughs> flip some of the stations to straight Christmas. Yeah, I had to do 12-hour shifts of playing it. I lost my mind. Let me tell you something, though. In New York City, when they would do that, right, they would sell so much inventory because it was playing in all the fucking stores and everybody you know that it started to be like eight or nine fucking channels i don't know whether it still is because i don't listen to terrestrial but like seven eight channels would go christmas music and now they start earlier too because it used to be like a week before thanksgiving uh -huh. now they start right after halloween yeah because they want to beat uh, the people, all right, pretty good prize clause for you. Yeah, that's good. I didn't think uh, this Jim Jeffries show would be uh, <laughs> would go over as fast for for a prize. Uh, let's go to Bill in Hartford. What is your unpopular opinion? Hey, Gail. Hey, Ron. Uh, uh, I was thinking football is more boring than baseball. Baseball you know, has like it feels more like there's more commercials. The plays feel simpler. I don't know. Simpler. I'm kind of biased because I've always been a baseball fan. Um, well, at least you understand that you are biased, and I, I could understand that anybody would have a one choice over football with another sport. Um, but I would disagree, and maybe mainly because I'm American. I get it when people come here and they didn't grow up with the sport, right? But it's not simple plays, I mean, not it's a all. very complicated game. Uh, Chris? Uh, no, not at all. He is wrong. Baseball is not more boring. Yeah. Um, not. I would say that I do enjoy watching baseball in person more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get more invested in the game, and I think that football does get dragged out. So I'm going to agree okay. with Bill. Uh, Earl? I'm going to agree because I'm a major baseball fan, and football has just become watered down, and the games are longer than baseball games. Everyone yes, but it's it. but the, nothing could be more exciting than the end of a football fucking game. I'm sitting there every week red zoning, freaking out. I, was, <laughs> I, I care nothing about that game, but Chris Jack had, 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 a, had a, game, uh, a fucking bet on it. I was going crazy at my house. I, I was, was trying to get him no, pumped. I was pacing and cursing and yelling. In my, I haven't done that about a baseball game in a long time. Uh, Vito Calise who's a baseball fan. Now, remember, let's go back. Uh, all right, his point was football is more boring than baseball. Vito Calise. I disagree with him. Wow. Whoa. Mr. Matt disagrees. Wow, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm a football guy. I love football. Really? Yeah, I'm a big <laughs> since, football fan, since Ron. When? when did you even, even, when did that start? <laughs> Well, I actually wanted to show you guys something I've been working on. Okay, great. What's... Get back in your fucking cells, inmates, because it's time for Warden Vito's Football Lockdown. Oh, what the fuck? It's bullshit. I'm Warden Vito, 
and welcome to this week's football lockdown. Your first lockdown, Cowboys and Jets. You're going to take the Cowboys at minus seven and a half. Because sick boy Sam Darnold's going to be 50 pounds lighter and trying not to die. The Cowboys are going to take the Jets to the yard and stomp them out. Your next lock is Seahawks at Browns. You're going to take the Seahawks at minus two. Because last week, Russell Wilson completed 17-23 for 268 yards. He's got a 158 passer rating, and he's going to make a joke of this town. And he's going to make Baker Mayfield hold his pocket prison bitch style. Lockdown. For your final lockdown, Falcons at Cardinals. You're going to take the Cardinals at plus two and a half. The Cardinals won their first game last week, and they're going to keep this thing moving right along. The Cardinals have no interceptions allowed. That's great. And you know what? The Cardinals are going to take a shiv to the Falcons' defense in this old-school shower fight. Now you can leave your cells, because the lockdown is over. First of all, what the fuck is lockdown? It seems he's being very violent. I think lockdown's a much better fucking uh, premise. No, it makes sense. I'll tell you this, he hasn't lost a game this year. He hasn't been a game this year, Ron. It's impossible. Get back to your cell, bitch. This is time for the lockdown. (laughs) Fuck you, Warden. Hey, by the way, Vito, I mean, nobody checked your work, but there's no way Russell Wilson has a 158 fucking rating for the season. I think it was for last week, and I misspoke in my lockdown. That would mean he's perfect every game. That's not possible. You shut up. Lockdown time. (laughs) You shut up. You don't know shit about football. I had to teach you what a spread was two years ago. Can I just say something? Spread them cheeks. That I feel like the lockdown kind of brings the masculinity in a way that lockdown doesn't really. Lockdown sounds like lockdown. I'm going to lockdown, (laughs) baby. Yeah, lockdown. You get the... Oh, you get Bob Seger. Bob yeah, Seger's sexy. much. Lock and Load is a much better <laughs> song than whatever the hell fuck he was Lock playing. Lock and Load is about putting yourself in someone's <laughs> ass and fucking acting. You're going to get in the shoe. So you quit? You gave uh, it no, to. No, Ron, I'm not fucking quitting. Yeah, so you're over. I mean, we don't have a. We can't have two guys picking. Oh, uh, yeah, we can because my fucking picks are turning around this week. Can I just say something? This is what destroyed Big Brothers. Yeah, yeah it really I know. Is. And guess what happened? You Bro- split the audience. No, Bro Watch. Fucking came out of the fucking gate and destroyed Big Brothers. All right, it was the better show. Lockdown's the better fucking betting segment. Did you say lockdown's the better betting? Lockdown is what I said. (laughs) Sounded like you said. I said lockdown. I think you did. I don't think you should pick a name so close to his. He's picking a name close to mine. But why don't you have like the production value he does on his? You know who you seem like, Eli Manning. (laughs) Like yesterday's news, you gave us some great times. Vito is not Danny Dimes, Ron. Don't fucking say that. I got the comptroller of Locktown in Lockdown. <laughs> it's all mayhem in there. There is no comptroller. It's just me, the mayor of Locktown. That's it. Uh, all right, let's jump back into unpopular opinions. Let's go to Tom in New Mexico. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it yeah. going, Tom? What is your unpopular Good. opinion? Yeah, Chrissy Teigen. Uh-huh. I do not get it. She doesn't do a thing for me. You don't find her physically attractive? Not in the least. Uh, let's take a look. At, I don't always know everyone, but I'll take a look at this. She's everywhere. Yeah, she is. Because Isn't she a supermodel? Am I crazy? She's a, she was a swimsuit model. Yeah. Okay. Which means a curvier. Yeah. Now she hosts lip sync battle. Uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, I mean, I don't know how good she is as a performer, but... She's a beauty. She's a roly-poly little bat face girl. I love her. <laughs> and who's she with there? It's, it's John husband, Legend. John Legend. I thought that was her own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, she's beautiful, Chris. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Yeah, I, I think she's pretty. Sorry, Sorry. dude. Sorry, Sorry dude. dude. Sorry you um, hate Chrissy so much. Let's go to Chris in Virginia. Uh, yes, I hate amusement parks. I'd rather stick a fork in my eye than spend a day at Disney World. But you're an adult, and you should yeah. hate amusement parks. <laughs> they're for children. Um, so, I mean, for for what they're made to be, yeah. they're very exciting. It's like saying I hate Chuck E. Cheese. I do, but if I was 
a juju, I'd be going fucking crazy. In a yeah, are you juice. kidding? She'd love it. Yeah. yeah, me at 36, I have no, I have no, I know not want to go Dude, to Disney you're World. you're only 36? I'm, yeah, Ron, I'm, I'm 36 years old, nice. yes. Wow. But you're me at, the oldest 36 I've ever seen. Me really at 10, nice. fucking love Six Flags. We're all fucking took yeah, the course. bus all the time. Yeah. It was awesome. So, unpopular opinion. Yeah. None of us are going to agree. Luther in Oakland, what is your unpopular opinion? I, uh... I hate bananas. My wife hates eggs, but I hate bananas. Love banana bread. Hate bananas. Now, why would anyone hate a banana? It's, I love it's a, a staple. Banana. It, tastes, it tastes is horrible, and it tastes nothing like banana bread. I know for a fact that you have one. What? You have one vote for sure. I like this guy. I like where he's coming from. Oh, you hate a banana. He hates hate bananas. bananas. Texture, taste, everything. I fucking no weirdo. love bananas. I can't get enough. I got no problem with the texture, or I like I love on your the side with the peel and everything. <laughs> but I hate bananas. I'm, thank you, Gail. Earl, let's let's hear from Earl. Yeah, he might do it just on practical purposes. Let's see. Hate them, hate them, hate them, because I'm, I'm allergic to them, and they you're can not kill me. allergic so to them. You're it's a banana. Lying yet again. All right, so we've got two and two. Luther, Come on. I'm sorry. I fucking love oh. a banana. Yeah. I'm sorry, Luther. I like oh. even a banana candy. It's yeah. nature's candy. It's delicious. Earl, when did you start being allergic to food? That's a lie. Remember the I, um. I told this story when I was. I think I was about eight years old. I had some bananas. I was playing ball. And all of a sudden, my Faint. face completely started to swell. My throat got really compressed. I had trouble Maybe breathing. Maybe pressure from playing ball. <laughs> I'm going to sneak some banana in the food without you even knowing. No, it. please don't. I'll just say it. It's going to be an experiment. Don't worry. You're not going to know. Was that the last time you had a banana? <laughs> yes, it was. I don't I don't think that's it because he doesn't, no, like, to eat, was, he doesn't a, like to eat fucking uh, um, He bugged chicken. out when we all got smoothies and he was grabbing his throat and yeah. saying, Oh, yeah, yeah he still let us buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan in New York, what's your unpopular opinion? Nathan. Nathan, you there, buddy? Nathan, please. I, I, I am here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I've got, uh, I had time to think while I was on hold. The first one is I believe that the Home Alone series is awful. And on top of that, I also believe that the Mighty Duck series. But you, you can only right. pick you one, only so we're going to go with your first one, Home Alone. First of all, I don't even know the series, what happens. Is You really can only go by the first one. Yeah, I mean, the first it, is the classic. The second one has a Donald Trump. Yeah, it's a fucking yeah. cash grab. You yeah. know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. you know, this, this that's kid's money. hot right now. Now, the Home Alone fucking kid captured a nation's heart. I mean, no one ever fell for a kid like that <laughs> kid since Shirley Temple. You'd have to go all the way back to Shirley Temple. Two... The fucking water bandits. Oh my god! Yeah, fucking, the wet bandits. Yeah, that they were the fuck, best. Yeah, just straight pratfall, really getting hurt bad. I mean, I I was watching that as a kid in the movie theater, howling, howling, Screaming. With laughter oh yeah, loved at it. the pain that was endured by those two men. I also love the parents in that. They're two of my favorite fucking. I know actors of all they're time. great. They're both fantastic. And no one even got mad at them for leaving their kid behind. No, everyone was fine with it. Yeah, and his dad said. Look, to it him, happens. His dad said to him, "You're a funny guy. <laughs> very casual." I thought that was great. No, I didn't know they were called the Wet Bandits. I thought they were called the Water Bandits. I think it is. Uh, I think it of a porn I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Justin in Wyoming. Hey, I. Uh, uh... Got an unpopular opinion. I don't like pork. That sounds like somebody's a bit of a Muslim. Am I right, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to remember. Or a Jew, I guess. <laughs> uh, believe me, I know a lot of Jews. They eat the shit out of it. Yeah. I mean, that just, yeah. with, uh, with Jews, it's a rule of thumb. Yeah. Muslims take it serious. Yeah, with Jews, it was like, the right. temptation, I think, was too but you got to remember, uh, bacon is fucking pork. Pork chops are pork. Okay. I mean, oh, yeah. ribs and pork. Prosciutto. I'm Fuck. not it's only going to disagree. Great. I'm going to go so far as to say I think it's our best meat, period. Oh. Well, it's the, uh, it's the other white meat, they call it. Mm. Fucking and pork yet belly. superior. Yeah, pork belly's great. Yeah, doesn't even I mean, you got, a, you got a bunch of pork eaters here. I don't think Earl probably does. It reminds him too much of banana. <laughs> uh, Siege in Long Island. Hey, Siege. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. 
I got to tell you, I hate a bright, sunny day. I mean, Ron, I heard you say it before, you could live like a vampire. The yeah. night is just so much better than when it's screaming bright. And, you know what I mean? It, it's not the warmth, it's the bright. It is bright to me, too. Yeah. A lot of people disagree. I prefer the night. I like winter because of the long, long nights. One time I, I worked in this uh, fucking warehouse. We worked s seven days a week, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the winter. I didn't. I went like three, four weeks without seeing the sun once. We had oh, no windows true. in the place. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have been happier. <laughs> Now, I think Siege has a possibility of going all the way. However, he does not have my vote because I love a sunny day. I love sunshine. More than one, like, consecutive rainy day, and I, like, start to feel the deep, dark depression. I mean, two rainy days in a row, and I start to feel... But it's feel, a comfortable depression. I it's don't like I like can't it. come out. It's no. fucking raining. It's And when ugly. I come, come out of, like... Uh, when I come out of this building, I'm yeah. like a like a little plant. I'm just like, oh, the sunshine feels so good on my skin. Let me skin. tell you this. I'm going to give you the comedy club thing. <coughs> Winter, better audiences mm. because they're inside. They're happy to be inside. Right. Rainy days, better audience. Makes you have sense. a fucking bright sun. Like, uh, I was just asked to fucking uh, do a week in Aruba. I go, who wants to fucking go into a club in Aruba? That makes sense. Yeah. You know? Or a movie. If, if you want to watch a movie, you know oh, what yeah. I mean? You got right. um, and I actually get guilt sometimes watching TV or a movie on like summer weekends. Yeah. I'm like, why would I why would I do that today? This was stupid. I know a girl, she used to pray for rain so she could fucking relax and go inside cuz she would be outside all the time. Oh, she yeah. couldn't stand to be inside yeah. on a nice day. So she goes, I hope it rains so I can get some rest. Mm. Chris, uh the sun does nothing for me. Yeah. I prefer the fucking night. You're uh, the opposite. I'm the opposite. Earl, I need my light. I need my sun. I need a bright sunny day. Really? I need, I, I've I, never seen you outside. No. You, you're <laughs> wearing head to toe black. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I, but I hate short days. I hate like the short days without Fine sunlight. With them. I could live in fucking. I, Norway. I never heard of him doing an outdoor activity. Nothing. Uh, I mean, uh, it's perfect for shooting. Like, I when I go out what? to shoot. You, most oh of your shooting Dear is at God. night. All right, two to two. Vito Calis is going to be. I know he's going to be the tiebreaker. Once again, we don't know how this Italian is going to go. <laughs> I love the sun now, and I love to get a nice tan. Oh, fucking lost weight loss yeah, bullshit. Yeah, I'm surprised. I thought Earl was going to be the one to I thought he was, too. I thought to we could count on Earl. Because I knew me and Vito were going to be sunshine kids. Sorry, Sorry my friend. Siege. I wanted to send you in for a prize. Fucking flashlight. Earl's lies took it from you. Uh, Mike in Louisiana. Unpopular opinions. Yes, I hate cheese. All types of cheese. I feel like what? you're trolling right now. I mean, I, I literally don't understand. Now, I know people lactose, but they, they cry. Cause yeah, they cry because they can't eat cheese. Um, you know, I've never liked it in my whole life. You're fucked up. I fucking shouldn't <laughs> eat cheese, but I fucking love it, and I do eat it. Can I ask you this? Do you eat a hamburger sandwich, no cheese? <laughs> I get a patty melt, no melt. Oh, oh my god. Like what's the even... point of Nothing that? melts <laughs> so in that <laughs> patty melt. All right, you got three no's. You're I out. mean you're I mean... you're so you're so out. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. Uh let's go. I mean, there are some types of cheeses. I'll be like, this is too strong or this is too weird. Right. But across the board, cheese is a good idea. Uh let's go to Sherry in New Jersey. What is your unpopular opinion? Hey guys, what's up? Hey. I loathe disco music. I hate it. Disco? disco. I hate it. Hate it. Now I would almost say disco is polarizing. I wouldn't necessarily. It was call when it, it came out. You think now it's more popular? No, I mean, no, no. Now people don't take it as right. serious. You see, you don't understand. People thought, is this ever going to stop? Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> is this going to go on forever? And in some ways it has. Mm. You know, yeah, but it was the beginning of the drum machine. It was the beginning of kind of production over organic playing. I get it. Mm -hmm. Now, in hindsight, I'm like, some of it was good. Some yeah. of it was better than I gave it credit for, you know? Yeah. It's just not as good as soul music. Earl, where do you hate disco? 
I thoroughly enjoyed disco music. I thought it was fantastic. It was it was kind of loose and fun. And yeah, I know you like it. I I do like disco. Chris Stanley, I'm not a fan of disco. Um, I'm gonna have to disagree. There are some good songs in there. Sorry, Sherry. It's unpopular uh, opinions. I've got one right now that I think, if I put it out there, and I don't know if anybody agree with me. I honestly believe that the Kurds are going to beat the Turks in this war. <laughs> really? Yes. I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, I think the amount of missiles and planes one side has has nothing to do with it. I, think okay. I believe in the to do with it. fighting uh, spirit of the Kurds. I used to date a Kurd girl, and she oh. was... I mean, just a Never badass. Didn't know this. Yeah, years uh, ago. Oh yeah, I mean, I understand it's in the past. Yeah. I hope. Uh, Aaron in California, what is your unpopular opinion? I hate bread and butter pickles. Bread and butter pickles or sweet pickles? No, they're kind of bland. Yeah. They're kind of in the middle, right? Yeah, they're in the middle. Yeah. I mean, is there a pickle I want to eat? The answer is no. No, I love pickles. Yeah, I mean, it's always a nice little fun thing if somebody puts yeah. some pickles out. The pickle festival's coming up, so that's cool. Where? Uh, the uh, Lower East Side. I'm pro Right by Cat's Deli. So this is already like a problem. Pickles. Yeah, it already happened already. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking haven't missed it in like three years. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I fucking love the pickle festival. Fuck. All right, I've got my own unpopular yeah. food opinion. All right. I don't want... A hot fudge sundae. Don't add hot fudge to ice cream. Don't put anything a la mode. If you are put a hot item next to ice cream, I'm totally grossed out. I don't like wow. melted ice cream. And yet people, a lot of people, find this to be like superior dessert. I mean, if you have a, a brownie yes. and it's warm... It's going to be helped by a scoop of vanilla ice cream. A lot of people feel this. A lot of people like a hot pie with a scoop of ice cream. A lot of people like a hot fudge on said ice cream. What do you think this about people who put a big hunk of cheese on their <laughs> apple pie? That's become a that's become a standard game. Uh, I mean, I think it's the definition of gluttony. <laughs> I mean, look. <laughs> I think you... a big piece of hot, a sharp <laughs> cheese against the top of an apple pie. I mean, this... I'm going to disagree. I mean, I I find it to be delicious. It's the shit. Just yeah. the warmth and the cold no, together, man. No, it's it makes you so sick. good. And it's melting the ice cream. It's, so it's melting much the bad. ice cream. It's also melting the brownie. Oh. It's so much better than either of them alone. If I had a cup, a cup of fucking hot fudge and just cold ice cream, either either one, fine. Together, fucking amazing. Well, no one's just going to have a hot <laughs> fudge by itself. I think you confused yeah. your argument. There's not a human I've being. never seen you eat hot fudge with a spoon. Just have a glass of hot fudge? Yeah. No. Uh, Earl? I... Love hot fudge sundays. I love olive right, oil. So I'm out. I don't get a pretty good prize. But you know what? I knew that. I knew it was an unpopular opinion, and I'm standing by it. I'm going to say this. I haven't had a, a, a sundae in decades. And I think about it all the time, like a banana split or something. Oh, I like a banana oh, yeah. split. I would love to have a banana usually, had it by the way, years. banana split usually doesn't have a hot item on it, right? Yeah. I mean, normally, it's just we'll like a banana like whipped cream, peanuts. Sauce. Literally, Delish. I think the last time I had one, Reagan was shot. That's how far back <laughs> I'm going. Wow. And by Forever. the way, I just want to specify, if you want to put a cold chocolate sauce on an ice cream, I'm happy with it. Yeah. Like if you want to squirt some cold Hershey syrup on it, this is delicious. Heat it up. Let's go to Jason in Rochester. Jason. Hey, buddy. <laughs> so I, I completely loathe superhero movies. I think they're redundant. I think all the villains are the same. I think they all end the same. I'm going to the say this. Point. If there were children here, you'd have a thing. But I think adults... <laughs> yeah. Will put up with those kind of things to take their kids to or to support their kids, but I think most adults. You think so? It's starting to look like from the numbers and from the internet, like there's a lot of adult fans of superhero movies. It seems like it's it's like that. I think there's a. I think most of them are like high school kids, don't don't you? No, I think that these are like Like people... younger adults, like dudes in their 20s, you think? No, I think that we were talking about guys in their 30s, 40s, and 50s who enjoy going to superhero movies. I think they I do. know Earl does. He doesn't miss one of them. His favorite is Black Panther. <laughs> Wakanda forever. What is that town called? Wakanda. Wakanda. <laughs> the town of Wakanda. Locktown Wakanda. <laughs> 
Uh, I just don't. I just don't like that. Like the action is so fast paced in them. I agree. Yeah, I mean, leave, it's a computer fighting it itself. It's fucking ridiculous, yeah. and you never worry. So, do you think not a popular enough opinion to be? Well, I mean, Martin Scorsese came out and said it's not cinema. Right. You know what I mean? And nobody, no one who even watches that got mad at him. Right. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, yeah. Scorsese like the people who That's make fair. those movies go, I really like Scorsese. I get what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> James Gunn or whatever that dude was was yeah. like, yeah, I know what he's saying. <laughs> I try hard, though. Let's uh, go to Brian in Queens. What's your unpopular opinion? Yeah, hey, I never understood why people like like really spicy food. Like, a little spiciness is fine, but when it's really hot, I, you don't taste anything. I don't know. Did you ever see that hot wing fucking show? Hot ones? They, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you see that uh, most guys are like, yeah, I can fucking eat hot stuff even yeah. when they can't. Yeah. I don't know why they do it to themselves either. I they're all it, crying. At it's the end. a sickness, I think. That's a, well, I think that's some sort of a, maybe a, they get like a sexual kink from it. Wow, that's surprising to me. That that's could what be I the think, unpopular I, opinion. I think it's, uh, <laughs> you know, like it's uh, masochistic. But, you know, that's hot. Don't you want some spice on your food? I need though? Spi- yeah. I do yeah. need spice. So to go against, I mean, fucking. Columbus went around the world to get some spices. That's how bland European food was. All right, let's so. go to uh, let's go to Jose. Jose in Detroit. Hey, Bennington's. I love yeah. the show. Yeah, it's good. Uh, can't 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 wait to hear uh, Locktown this week uh, after you. those horrible picks. But uh, they weren't great I... picks, by the way, that he was making. <laughs> Picking the Cardinals. He's right. well, why is there only two points in the fucking? That's that's strange. That's a strange spread. Yeah, but are you worried about taking it now because of it'll look like you're just mm-hmm. look copy off don't lockdown? Mean any of his fucking lockdown garbage? Locktown has its own fucking uh, algorithm. Lockdown. Locktown. Sorry, I get Well, who does which? I'm confused. I now. Chris Stanley which does lockdown. Which one does the fat one do? Crit Locktown. That's me. <laughs> I'm the fat one, and I do lockdown. Are you uh, on TV this week? I know I'm not. Ron. Lockdown is. He's wearing a lockdown T-shirt in it, though. Uh-huh. All right, what do you got, Jose? Hey, um, I know a lot of people hate me for this, but I can't change the radio station quick enough if an Eagles song comes on. I just can't listen to the Eagles. So I know people who feel that way, and it's based in uh, a kind of a 1970s prejudice that okay. they got popular making the same music that like the Flying Burrito Brothers and Crosby, Stills, Nash were making. Um, But there are plenty of good Eagles songs and they're doing the Hotel California tour and it's going to play in New York multiple nights. You know, sure. And you can't listen to Hotel California and not tell me you don't no. fucking love that. That's song. a good point. I mean, I'm not. I would not call myself an Eagles fan, but I feel like you've got to give it to them. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna ask you this: Have you ever listened to the Desperado album? I have. Yeah. Yeah, I can't stand it. Fucking great album. You know what I mean? It's a great country album. Uh, I'm gonna disagree, even, even Chris. They made fun of it in the. In the uh, documentary, I uh, I disagree with it as it's, well. I, I've just heard people say the Eagles suck for years, right? Yeah. But I, I I personally am fine. I'm fine. And that with Big Eagle. Lebowski helped. With that, that was big, big with it. Yeah, yeah. Right. good point. Uh, but people did hate them even in the seventies. Okay, uh, even when they're big, Earl. You got three great lead singers, potentially great lead singers. You got great songs. You got one great lead singer. We got Henley. You got yeah, you got pretty Henley. good. Pretty good is not the same as great. He'd be an average singer, and if they didn't have Don Henley, you know, people would not bring up the vocals they have. I don't know. So you love him. Yeah, I'm an Eagles fan. I'm a bash. You going to that Hotel California? I'm going to try to. All right. Count me in. Where are you getting tickets? Get me. Give me seven. (laughs) Dylan in Atlanta, what's your unpopular opinion? All right. Mine is flip-flops. I don't like wearing them or see people wearing them. But what about, I'm going to give you one thing. No. The beach. Yeah. I mean, look, do I like to see a man in flip-flops at a formal event? No, no. I don't. I don't want to see his hairy toes. It's not time for that. But I do think there's a time and fl- place yes. for it, and that's summer on the beach. And I, yeah. I need, I wear flip-flops. You're, you're walking beach. from your hotel room to the beach. You don't, it looks stupid to have shoes on. 
I don't like to look true. up and see a fucking pair of shoes it's true. walking across the beach. Also, I'm going to just remind you guys, I'm Florida woman. Yes. You know, I mean, that used to just be what I called shoes yeah. for most of my life. But now also, if you're in a public shower, you got to have on shower shoes. Oh, They're yeah. a flip flop. I College. don't care what anyone fucking says. Yeah. So, no, there is a time and a place. Yeah. Now, is that place a subway? No. no that's gross. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't do it. Nobody wants to up. see Mantos no. under any circumstances. Sorry, Dylan. Uh, let's go to Daniel in Indiana. Hey, buddies. Hey. Uh, my unpopular opinion is I don't think that Trump's that bad as a president. Is well, that an unpopular opinion? Well, it's about half. Yeah. You know what I mean? Somewhere around, I think, 43%, which is not enough. I mean, if you called my dad's house, he would agree with you 100%. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I mean, he's going through a lot of... De- he's got the Republicans mad at him right now. He's got the Democrats mad at him right now, and he loves it. He's enjoying... Mm. He's the disruptor. Everybody won it, but I'm going to agree with Gail. I don't think there's enough people that this has become an unpopular no. opinion. You know, it's not the same place where if you were saying the, you know, I think the Eagles thing actually makes more sense right. to debate. Yeah, I agree. Know? This thing is debated every day, by the way. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to yeah. give day. you my, uh, this is a person yeah. that is my unpopular opinion. Okay. Uh, and maybe this is just among my group, okay. which is women and gay men. Uh, I don't want Oprah's advice. I don't want to know her favorite things. It's not that important to me. Um, I would agree with that. I mean, I'm, I've never felt like everything that we were saying about Ellen the other day is, is the same with Oprah. hundred yeah, percent. I agree. It's just, it's, it's a weird thing. And I feel like I have to hide. Even among my friends. You know how, like, you wouldn't bring up maybe politics with family? Right. That's how I am with my friends and Oprah. Because they're gay. And, yes, and women. And so they'll be like, oh, my God, Oprah. And did you see this Oprah tweet? And did you see Oprah said this? And I just have to sit there quietly because I'm like, I, I don't feel like they even know the truth I remember, about me. I remember when uh, Oprah was here to do some kind of town hall, right? And I've never seen anyone do this before. They brought the elevator up, stopped it, and left the elevator there. Yeah. And I'm like, that's kind of obnoxious. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You need an elevator on call like you're the president with a fucking doctor? She doesn't mm-hmm. wait for elevators. It was fucking crazy. Just watch the guy standing in the fucking elevator, basically. I mean, it would have been easy enough to say, okay, we're bringing the elevator up. Two hours has passed, <laughs> and <laughs> we're going straight down. No one can get in the elevator. I get that. I don't think it needed to sit there the whole time. And I thought a person who thinks of herself as a good person wouldn't take away an elevator bank. Earl, where are you on this? I know as a black woman, you love her. You have to. I love Big Mama Oprah, Big but, Mama. <laughs> but I've she's never... She's not even a mother. Uh, but <laughs> but yeah, you're that's saying... the other thing. They act like she's mother to us all. And I was like, I don't see... I don't think she has a maternal nature. No, zero God, maternal... Though. No, she is a business person. Yes. Yeah, I've only listened to one recommendation from Oprah Winfrey, and that was the book um, A Million Little Pieces by James Fry, and we know how that turned out. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a fucking lie. Yeah. And then what did she do? She fucking stabbed him. Yeah, she put the boots to him. Yeah. yeah. Which I actually thought was kind of shitty. It was shitty because she could have said, look, I read this book. I'm stupid for thinking something like this could happen. Right. By the way, I had him on this show. I thought that he was talking about Don Henley at one point because it was about an asshole drummer singer. Mm-hmm. So I go like this when I'm done with him. I go, was that Don Henley? And he's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, first of all, I know it's not Levon Helm. How many fucking drummer lead right. singers do we have out there? Right. He had no fucking idea. He just made this up like it's a fucking yeah. regular thing. Right. Yeah, there's only a couple. And then why I'm interviewing him, he's like, let's take some calls. He wanted to take calls from like fans who loved them and i'm like that's odd the guy wouldn't want to sit around and talk about his own you know sobriety very strange yeah. suspicious so you are on to him way before yeah Oprah. but i didn't fucking nail him right yeah but still Nor did i really give a fuck <laughs> and uh, i thought it was a pretty good fun read yeah you couldn't say that it was just a lie but, and right. he made the point later he's like look if i would have sold it as a fiction book i wouldn't have made any money 
No one wants that. They want, uh, you know, right. nonfiction. Is, it, it had to do with the zeitgeist of the I can air. see what's problematic about that, but I don't know if that gives you free reign to just say. Well, it just means that a lot of those nonfiction books are fucking fiction. Right. Uh, let's go to Jeff in New Orleans on his unpopular opinion. Jeff. Hey, first first off, Ron, I hope Creeps with Kids comes down south sometime. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, unpopular opinion is <laughs> I truly enjoy catch up with my steak. Well, I mean, you say that you enjoy it, but it certainly doesn't enhance steak. It means that you're buying really I, bad steak. No, I think it does. I'm Italian, and I think it just adds a little pop to it. No Italian uses a ketchup on anything. Oh, fucking goodness. horrendous. No, 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 Jeff. Na- name one food an Italian puts ketchup on. It's tomatoes. Yes. With vinegar. It's fucking high fruit it's sugar. Corn syrup. <laughs> it's fucking yeah. sugar. sugar. And, uh, you could go into a, a Italian's house and not even find ketchup. No. Your thing is insane. My- no, you're drunk. <laughs> you're drunk. First of all, if you were Italian, you wouldn't be living down south. Yeah, really. <clears throat> uh, let's go to Chuck in North Carolina. Chuck. Hey, y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but the sexual position 69, I just, I don't care for it. I don't It's like it's a competition. Do one at a time. Or whatever, plus you're always smelling ass. What do y'all think? Uh, well, the, the ass smelling isn't a problem, but it's basically a kid's position. Yeah, um, I'm going to just say that I agree with Chuck. I think that there's an age that you need to retire right. 69. It's an experiment. Every person, every man and woman both needs right. to go, I think I've tried that. I think yes. we've decided it doesn't work. It doesn't right. make sense. And you no don't, you don't to want to do it. You don't want to do it after a meal. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, you get older and uh, you're always you don't hold your you don't hold things your about farting. About farts. Yeah. I mean, that's where I'm going to disagree with you, Chuck. I think you've made this too much about ass. But it's a sexual position. Yeah. I don't know too many adults that even yeah, do it. I don't think no. it's even a good idea after yeah. a certain age, you know, yeah. for your but back. But there's not people neck. who, yeah, but people who are married don't fucking 69. It's yeah. really... Basically, kids, they're like, well, this is the least, you know. I know they seem to do yeah. this in porn for some reason. <laughs> What's your fucking Harry that you got to fight? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> it's like shampoo and conditioner at the same time. You don't need it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Chuck. Good one, Chuck. That's perfect. Uh, Steve in Ohio. Hello. What's up, Steve? What's your unpopular opinion? I just don't get Billie Eilish. I'm not sure why all these uh, famous rock stars are are into her. What famous rock stars? Because uh, this is all news to me. Oh, Dave Grohl for Dave sure. Dave Grohl, okay, is really into her. His daughter like it, like told him about her, and now he's like. But you do that for your concert. kids too. Yeah. But I put up. I I don't know her music. I know she was on SNL, and I fast forward it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go to my music guy, Earl. Earl. I agree with Steve. I've I've listened to this album multiple times, and it just goes. It stays. But start, is it for kids? I don't even know if it's for kids. Yes, it's, of course. I'm going to tell you. This is my experience with it. I kind of feel maybe that the emperor has no clothes after SNL, but I'm not going to fully agree because I I sat there and watched all her videos, and I'm like, there's something fascinating about this. Right. I don't know what it is, but I just I think that there's something interesting. About her. Man, there was a woman on the Today Show yesterday. She was dressed new agey, and she had on Converse. She had the weakest speaking voice and singing voice, and they were fucking crazy about her. And so she's a big hit. See if you can find it. Uh, Hoda was just loving her. And, uh, oh, man, I don't know whether you watched Hoda today. It was fucking classic. So, uh, Matt Lauer. Yes, after the news broke. After the news broke, they had to come out and say, Matt, they were still acting like, well, all the facts aren't in. We don't have all the information. Yeah, you do. You got it. It's been for years. And by the way, how have you, who worked with them, not heard the Matt Lauer rumors? And all the rest of us have, it made the paper for fucking five, six years. Right, yeah. Before the shit came down. Yeah, that fucking song isn't good. This is Billy Elfish. No, this this I'll play Billy Eilish for you. 
This is her big hit, uh, Bad Guy. I, I like how nutty she acts. The yeah. music isn't the, working for me. I know. The music videos are fascinating. And yeah, it's I, like I the ring. Yeah, I know. You can't not like keep your eyes on her. Get to the chorus. It's coming up, Chris. She's a weird yeah. kid. She's like seven. Find it. I'm finding it. Seems like you didn't. What are you going through? The whole fucking The whole show? show? Instead of just putting in Lauren Daigle, today's show? I mean, what are you doing, Chris? This is how fucking lockdown... Lockdown. Yeah. No, lockdown has replaced lockdown. It has a replaced Why don't you shit? take one week off, Chris? The, no, man. I got to fucking stay consistent. <laughs> Your problem is you've been consistent. <laughs> one and three. Yeah, one, two out of three, and one zero out of three, right? And the rest uh, of it's yeah. been straight one out of three. One out of three. That's yeah, your consistency. Yes, that is. But I have to change the consistency. All right. Go ahead and play right. this, girl. All right. It's going to begin Because this has made me feel like I was fucking nuts. I listened to her talk, Chris. I tried okay. to say. You're so psyched to have Lauren with us this morning. Your voice is angelic. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you much for me. coming in. Two Grammys. What was that like? Um, well, I laugh because Sorry, my on. producer and I were late to everything, yeah. and we were even late to receive the awards. Yeah, so it was a weak really, voice. Uh, now turn her up. Let's get her rocking. Now. She's rocking hard for this. I think she does a cover a wild thing. The Tone Loke one, though. Oh, good. <laughs> but we finally got to meet him. More interview. What are you doing, Chris? I'm getting to the singing. performance. Here we go. <laughs> singing, Chris. Thank you, guys. We don't need it from the beginning. No. We need hooks. Give me the hook. Oh, God, we're doing unpopular opinions. Let's hear John and Buffalo. John, what's your unpopular opinion? Hey, Bennington. I think that Tiffany Haddish has been shoved down our throats <laughs> in such a short amount of time. All of a sudden, she's everywhere, and I don't get it. Well, I'll say this. When you've gone from movies to TV to a game show in such a short amount of time, I kind of feel like America's agreed <laughs> with you. Right. You know what I mean? That's like, true. who just had, like, four movies... And then doing a, a fucking TV show and then going, yeah, I'll also take a game show. She's like, at this point, I feel like it's like, I didn't do it, kid. Right. You know what I mean? I didn't do it. Yeah. All right, I mean, we got to take a break here soon. You want to do one more unpopular? Yeah. Let's, uh, it's been a while since we've given out a prize. I know. See if we can find a, a prize winner. Scott in Illinois. Yeah. Um. I, I hate the, the fake stage porn stuff um, with the fake big boobs and everything. It's just, it's all played out. It just seems old. I don't know. But it's still very popular, but I think that's kind of an unpopular opinion. Well, I mean, I don't know whether you're attacking fake boobs or the performances. The acting? The performances, like the extra, yeah, you know, it's just completely staged and faked. I like more of a amateur feel, more of a... Like it's happening in the moment type no, thing. You, know? I, you were an amateur of like guy. This. I was an amateur guy, but I've switched more. It's like just a bad, quick, fake plot, and I like it. Or I like, have a reason. I like plot. Yeah, personally. As I've grown older, I've gotten more. I'm more plot like, I, and pl also like when they uh, they're fake uh, step brother and stepsister. I also yep. like. Earl yeah. got up and walked away because as a Christian, he refuses he to have an answer. opinion on porn. Earl, what is? What's the story with you and porn? No, I just don't watch it. I, I, I haven't watched one in ages and, and just never got into it. I'll watch one with you. <laughs> that was a little creepy. Why? <laughs> it's entertainment. All right. Uh, Michael Williams wrote this. Uh, unpopular opinion. I dislike Chris, <laughs> but I hate Vito. <laughs> I think that is across the board yeah, agreed with. That sounds pretty uh, accurate. I'm very dislikable. I'm yeah. fucking, I'm a dick. And Vito's hateable. Hateable, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm very antisocial. Uh, Dan from Philly said, even growing up in the Philly era, area, I hate Scrapple. That's just insane. No. Scrapple is so good. sausage. Uh, Black American says this, Bill Murray is not funny, Big Lebowski is dumb, Jim Carrey is corny. And then he goes on and on. Emma Stone is not beautiful, nor is she pretty. But I'd smash, though. Oh, okay, okay, great. Cool. <laughs> um, Mr. By Red the Apples. way, anytime anyone says, like, I don't find this woman attractive, but I'd fuck her, it's like, 
Yeah. Of course. Like, that's, I mean, literally, that's what men do. It's right. like, you don't really need, it's like, okay. This is an unpopular, probably, opinion, but I think Reading, Pennsylvania is the greatest city in America. I think it's getting to be more of a popular opinion. Cole. Yeah. The pretzel capital of America. Damn, it blows my mind. And my hometown, the place I was born. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm like John Mellencamp. I was born in a small town. <laughs> that is you. Reading's the name of my small town. <laughs> you know, people are like, hey, is there enough people even there to fill a theater? Well, we just released some new tickets. How's that fucking Whoa! Whoa, shit! Piece up on the eye bang of where to go in towns uh, after the comedy show. Who did this, Chris? Dan Schlissel. First of all, Dan, great idea. Um, and well thought out. Uh, New York, Chicago, L.A., Austin, all covered. Is there another uh, city? And by the way, most of these places I've eaten, if I'm going to be totally honest here. Richfield, Minnesota. That one shocked me. I wasn't ready for Richfield. <laughs> Where do you eat there? You eat at uh, Andale Taqueria. So what's the story? Uh, it's a taco place. And uh, his favorite thing there is the Mexican soup. Really? I didn't even know Mexicans have played in that world. Oh, Caldo yeah. de res. They have, some, they have some pretty good soups. And they have, I think, like their chicken soup, I think, is would give the uh, Jewish penicillin penicillin a run for its money. I have no problem with that. (laughs) I mean, to me, soup is soup. I'm not going to lie to you. (laughs) It's just some water that's been run over actual food. (laughs) I can never understand the thing of soup. Chris, you're not a soup eater, are you? No, I am a soup eater. I like soup. I never see you in here with a soup. I, I, I've been uh, all this week. I've been just souping it up. Oh, again, is this going back to your ass again? No, but I, I'll eat soup just. Uh, but you don't. That's what I'm trying to say to you. I see Gail bringing back soup. I, I see Vito bringing back soup. And the weird thing is I bring back soup and I don't even like soup. Like, and uh-huh. I feel like I eat more soup than Chris. I know that you do. Because I'm like, no, I don't want soup. <laughs> I've had enough of those things. I go, why not just bring me a tea? It's the same thing. <laughs> I like my Savory food tea, anyone? <laughs> I don't even cover my food with fucking gravy the way Wait people do. Wait a second. Yeah. Why don't they have savory tea bags? Wait a minute. We were joking around. But if you could just drop a tea bag of chicken in something, <laughs> yes. you're off to the track. <laughs> it would have to be an edible bag. Like a chicken broth tea bag? Yeah, yes, dude. dude. That's, dude. I mean, like, I think we all got that. That was there wasn't saying. a difficult thing. I, I, to I pick was, up. I was seconds behind that. What about a beef broth bag? Wait, now you're on to something, Chris. I didn't even think of that. Thank you, Rock. What about a vegetarian option? Mm. I'm writing all this down, and I can't even keep up with the ideas that are flying around this room. <laughs> so, Gail, you're gonna be uh, a showrunner. When uh, we're down in Austin. I am going to be a showrunner, running the show, holding down the fort. Do not break this thing. <laughs> show that I've spent my life working on. Precious. Precious. <laughs> it's ladies talk with Gail. I'm going to talk about my period. You could do that anyway. <laughs> what, what makes you think that you couldn't do that? <laughs> Do whatever you want. But be who you are. This show should break into song more. I think we all learned that from Jesus Christ Superstar. I love that. If we could just have a musical number now and again. Does it go Jesus Christ Superstar? Who in the cock do you think you are? Is that the lyrics? (laughs) (laughs) Who in the cock do you think you are? By the way, for you people at home that are keeping... uh, uh, Chris went nine minutes before he, he mentioned his illness this time. <laughs> Could you imagine if this fucking guy was paralyzed from the fucking waist down? Oh, God. It would be just constant. He'd be talking about it. There's people out there that deal with blindness. Never bring it up. Chris gets the shits. <laughs> and his asshole has to be the chief topic of every conversation. And that's why you're not going to Austin. I have to go to Austin. <laughs> stay with me. I can't go. I would love to see you stay with her. I'm going to Austin, Ron. Don't threaten me, dude. <laughs> Whatever you do. <laughs> you tried that fucking shit with Eastside Side Dave, and he kicked you off his sports program. <laughs> that is not a threat. That is just wanton desire. You, you know what? You, you, you fucking strung up with Bronx Johnny. All right? 
but you don't fuck around with that stuff around here. Vito's ready to pounce. He told me before, if I ever needed a hit, just fucking whisper in his ear. He said, just give me the eyebrow up. Oh, shit. <laughs> I go, I can't do that rock thing. Who was the wrestler that died yesterday? One of the Valiant Brothers? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even see a wrestler died yesterday. What? Oh. Looks like somebody doesn't do show prep. How's it going to be a showrunner? Um, Luscious Johnny Valiant. Yeah. Pre your time. You wouldn't know him. Hey, Keith, Delaware. Yes, yeah, sir. We already have uh, chicken and beef tea bags. It's called Bullion Cubes. God damn it. Yeah, but is it in a God bag? Damn it. It's, it's not why in a... do you need it in a bag? You For fun. You start up. For fun. We fucking blew it. I think it's still good. Do you know how much fucking seed money I took on this thing? <laughs> and now they're calling this the bullion fucking disaster. <laughs> um, Jason. Jason in New Jersey. Hello. Hey. Uh, so the Keurig, the K-Cups, has chicken noodle soup in uh, K-Cups. Oh, damn it. It's my ass. God But it's disgusting. It. It's disgusting. Ugh. Can I just, for all soup is disgusting, no, no matter how fresh it is. And then B, this idea, this folly that we ran into today, where literally there's not a store in America that doesn't have chicken tea bags. Only one kind of tea bag in fucking Chris Stanley likes. And that's them nuts in his mouth. <laughs> hey, remember when Vito was like, Oh, it's like chicken broth. And oh tea my bag. God, Vito, you're the worst of us all. <laughs> Awful. Remember how stupid I look now, writing down the ideas, being <laughs> excited about it, thinking we're finally going to get out of this fucking one horse town. I can't be a cutter anymore. I can't live like this. <laughs> Tired of being a local. I want to make it somewhere. And I want to make it in the field of dance. <laughs> Modern. Be what you want to be. Boy, this Colin Quinn at the Moon Tower is going to be fantastic. It's Friday, April 20th, 5 p.m. in Antone's Nightclub in Austin. Go to the iBank.com for a chance at free tickets. Yeah, Chris. I had already told everybody that. You probably were off shitting again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. You dropped a lot of weight. And oh. you know where I first say it? What is that? Your face. <laughs> Thank you. Your face looks fucking 18 to 19 years younger right It's now. like you shit out your yeah. face weight. <laughs> you, you don't look uh, a day over 53. Wow, that's old. Not for you, it isn't. <laughs> you normally look like a fucking old boulder. <laughs> Someone said, uh, you do a show with a boulder in the room? <laughs> I go, no. Dude, you have solid food today, Chris? Uh, I did. I had an apple and a banana in the morning. I don't know if those are the best things for your belly when you're coming back. Yeah, an apple is a little. Uh, even don't they normally say raw foods in general a little bit more difficult they on are. the stomach? Yeah, but he doesn't want a food that he'd have to cook. <laughs> yeah, I just grab it on the go. What about toast, which you love so much? I'm not going. There's no diner around here to get some diner toast. Dry toast. I need some butter. I'm not eating to dry toast. I thought you were coming back from a sickness. Yeah, but I still want some flavor on that toast. Dry toast for you. Ew. He'll have some dry toast <laughs> and some hot water. Wait a minute. I yeah. just got another idea. Well, yeah. What about a bread? So when you toast it, it's like the butter flavor is already in it. It's mm. like, it's just like almost baked, a baked in layer. <laughs> I'm loving pre-buttered bread. This is going to be great. For yeah. Chris. Can I get you pre-butter? <laughs> Wait a minute. Secondary idea. A bread that comes with peanut butter and jelly stuffing. <laughs> There's no way anyone's going to call up and tell us that exists already. And if it does, great. I'll go out and get some. <laughs> This is I'm, a win-win for us right now. Are you tired of rubbing <laughs> peanut butter and then splashing some jelly <laughs> on your bread? Wouldn't the world be a better place if there was already a peanut butter 
stuffed bread? Well, sharks, your fucking fat loser days are over behind you. Even old Barbara Corkin would have to admit that this fucking is a great billion dollar idea. <laughs> and Mr. Wonderful, we came with yours with some money. Cause you like money. <laughs> Mark, we put the Dallas Mavericks logo on yours. <laughs> and other guy from Canada, what's that guy that says way at the right hand side? Herjavec. What's his name? Robert Herjavec. Robert, we'd rather you didn't even get involved in this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think one time Robert said he liked dogs and everyone's like, I guess we'll put a dog on his. Like one time he's like, I have a dog. And they're like, thank God. He plays with dogs and he eats all the food. Whenever anybody brings food by, he's like, yeah. like And yet no one that. pays attention when he'll even go, I'll give you a million dollars for 2%. Is anybody interested at all? <laughs> Does anybody want any part of this? What about me? Robert Hurts like, shh. I'm trying to sell something <laughs> to the sharks. <laughs> you know what? I, my idea is to go in there, and Tracy Morgan might be perfect to do this with. It'd be the first time on Shark Tank we tried to sell the sharks a shark tank <laughs> on Shark Tank. <laughs> sharks, aren't you tired of keeping your sharks in a swimming pool or a puddle? Ugh, that's disgusting. <laughs> now we've made a tank that you could put a shark into. We call it Shark Tank. Remember that time, I think it was on uh, 30 Rock, when um, Tracy said, I want to treat every week like it's Shark Week. <laughs> <laughs> He's got shark tanks all over his house. Really? Yeah. He really does? Yeah. Just giant shark tanks. It's basically an aquarium as he lives in. He's in the dry part. He owns. Uh, Ron in Colorado. Yeah, just come let you know that they already make pre peanut butter and jelly toast. Motherfucker! God damn it! Losers! We're losers! We suck. Smuckers un Uncrustable. Fuck. Buy them in the freezer. First of all, great name, too. Uncrustable. You're that telling way... me they don't have crust as well? Yeah. They, they what if we have... came with a bread with crust? <laughs> the outside of it. <laughs> Sharks, aren't you tired of Uncrustables? Well, we've made double crust bread. <laughs> There's crust on the inside of the crust. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Wonderful. We made yours with some money. <laughs> Barbara, we put yours shaped like an old dildo. <laughs> uh, Robert, we didn't get anything for you, but we got your dog a bone. <laughs> Does that help you? What was Mark Cuban in trouble for not too long ago? He did something fucked up. He told his team to tank. Well, no, that can't be what had the fucking non-sports pages upset yeah they remember when they made the oh the mcgriddle yeah Fuck. What, but what is that waffle yeah it's like a sponge it's i remember like i tried can... it the fucking first day and i go fuck you i'm going back to the mcmuffin yeah i think i've had it once and i did the same thing but i go with sausage me too you put my hand up for high yeah. five and you didn't <laughs> see me we just did a barrington barometer without even meaning to <laughs> Village Underground in New York City. This is Sirius XM's Unmasked. Tonight's guest is one of the most respected stand up comedians working today. His latest special, Red State, Blue State, premiered on CNN and is available now on Netflix. Colin Quinn. And now, here's your host. Ron Bennington! And coming to the stage, Colin Quinn! Wow, dude. Nice. This, this is like a campaign stop for you. <laughs> For a guy who wants to break up America. Um, 
Seems like we're heading for a niche market with your plan, right? It's not. What like do you mean? A, well, it's not like a lot of people are going. Yeah, time to break up America. I feel like everybody's going like that. Because right. when I did uh, Unconstitutional, which was almost the same thing, everybody's like, oh, but now it's like, yeah, do it. <laughs> I like you say that it was almost the same thing. What's that? Well, my next, <laughs> this special is almost identical to yeah, my but, last special. But the truth is, no, it was two specials ago. But the truth is, everybody covers their area for their whole life in comedy too. It's not act like everybody's doing a special about, you know, science one day and dick jokes the next. <laughs> We're gonna be unmasked. <laughs> well, I will say this, I went back and watched the specials. You were, uh, you don't have like a kind of a look when it comes to clothing. Wow. No, here's what I'm saying. Every special. Hey, I didn't know we were gonna. I didn't think we were gonna start like coming all richvoicerose.com. All right. So that's out of this. That's out of the way. So if that prick shows up, tackle him. But I'm saying like in every one special, you got a suit. The next one, a yeah, hoodie. I know. No one knows. This one's just like. Well, a, I think that's, you know, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's also like uh, anytime I'm, you know, I never feel comfortable in any kind of clothes. Because I always. No, because I always feel like I should be in a different. I should have had a different shape. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've always had like, you know, it just goes back. I had a pot belly when I was like 11. It's been bad. <laughs> it's been tough, is all I'm saying. Well, you were an early drinker, so you were. Yeah, that. that didn't help either. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that took us to a new level. <laughs> but in those days, I was really a bitch. When I started comedy, uh, if you see pictures of me right before I quit drinking, I had a mustache, and I looked like I was like 48, and I was like 23. <laughs> I was 23, but I looked really old. Yeah. Like people, when I started comedy, people thought I was lying about my age. I was like 24, and the guys were like, yeah, I heard he's really 42. <laughs> that was like a bit of a rumor among some uh, club owners. What a horrible thing to follow you around. No, it was good to yeah. be good, because then I grew into my... By the time I get to my age, people are like, oh, yeah, he looks normal, it's okay. Right. Yeah. yeah, there is a certain age where everyone just thinks that you look good just for being alive. Right. And that's where I am right now, I'm too. Right, I'm like, right hey, next to you. Yeah. Hey, you look fantastic. Yeah. I, go, <laughs> I feel... Yeah. It's sad. That's sad, that got Yeah, close. no, you do. And um, I feel the same way since my heart attack. I feel like, hey, now I, yeah. everybody's like, all right, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just accept it, you know. I, I thought that was like kind of an interesting way to promote the special. <laughs> you know, get a little heat for the... For the heart attack? The, yeah, the heart, heart, attack. heart attack happened before I even decided to do that special. Yeah. That was it right after, yeah. How was that for you? Was it enjoyable? Was it something... <sighs> It was, um, you know, it was one, it was one of those uh, really, you know, it just made me so annoyed that I would actually, you know, right. have a heart attack. Because I quit smoking. Because it was so hard to quit smoking. And I really feel like I never got the credit, the biological credit I've deserved <laughs> from quitting smoking 23 fucking years ago. And then to have a heart attack was like an insult to injury. <laughs> That is true. Weird, yeah. you, uh, you quit smoking, you quit drinking, and then, you know, you go past the bar now and there's a guy 90 doing right. shots and smoking cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing it's fair ridiculous. about any of this. Yeah. Um, I don't mind the World War II vet guys that do that. Yeah. Because then you're like, oh, well, you know, it's a different breed of human. But right. When you see somebody that, you know, just missed Korea and WWE, <laughs> and then you're like, this fucking guy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I like those guys, they won't look up. They're just staring in their glass. Right. Like there's a fucking answer to their problem somewhere. Yeah. That's real drinking. Not, yeah. Not fucking kids are sitting around doing these effeminate little drinks that Whoa. they have now. Yeah, I went there, Colin, I did. I, I used to be a bartender too, you know. Yes, yes. How was that? Were you good at it? I was, yeah, I was very good, unless I would start to nip a little bit at the <laughs> <Yeah>. bar. <laughs> One I was them, fine, but you. oh yeah, then it would always turn into something else. Yeah, because you feel like you're at a party, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, this is enjoyable. And you don't notice 12 horrified faces at the bar looking at you. <laughs> and you're like, why are they getting weird? I'm the bartender. 
<laughs> so, you know, it's yeah. back on the bricks. What I used to do, what a different world it was, I would dry, when I would lose my jobs, which happened all the time, I would have to walk up. I would walk, Upper East Side was the only neighborhood. This neighborhood in the Upper East Side was the only neighborhood people would go out to at night, you know? Yeah. In this early, late 70s, early 80s. I would walk up 3rd Avenue, hit every bar with a fake resume because they couldn't call me other places. <laughs> so it would be like places, but they wouldn't answer. Blah, 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 and just go to every bar until I got a job and I'd get some decent job that way. Well, not an exciting story, but... Um, <laughs> oh. Hey, folks. I'm just going to... I'm going to ask the audience just to lean back for a few moments. It's not going to stay that compelling, but... Um, let's, yeah. you know what I mean? It's a, it's a roller coaster. Well, I've got... Yeah, I've got some good boss stories we'll get to later. <laughs> but that was your thing. You're into comedy, but when did this run start with the one-man shows? Because... To me, and it's going to seem like I'm blowing smoke here, but I think you've been one, on one of the greatest, most consistent runs all time. In oh, thank you. And it's... Um, Thanks. Thank you. Thank you those of you that applauded the sort of show. Some of, you, <laughs> some of you saw my Comedy Central Presents, and you're acting like you're following me. I'm here for Ron, and I respect that. But let's not get crazy. Sorry, guys. Um, I hate to leave the audience out. But, you know, what can you do? Well, that's um, but thank you. Yeah, I started yeah. doing one-man shows. What happened was, I, my first one I did in L.A. was the beginning of Irish Wake. And it was just, it was about my block, my family, all that stuff. And it was like a real Irish-specific uh, show. I did it in L.A. in 1991. And um, then I moved it to Off-Broadway. And then moved it to Broadway. And then never filmed it. And those, this is 1998. It still kills me. Like, it got... It was selling out every night on Helen Hayes. It was like the hottest I'll, I'll ever be. And I and we didn't film it. Like, because if you tried to film in those days, it was like a big production. Right. And it was like, well, you can't film. Well, Union will. So the producer tried to film it. They stopped them. The house stopped them. Like, you can't do that. Imagine now. It's, you have to, you know what I mean? Everyone's yeah. filming all day. I know you had to put your things in there, but still, you know. <laughs> But I'm saying it's yeah. like it was like a big thing, so I don't have a copy of that. And one. that was something that you were really happy with. You were really you know, yeah, yeah. Could have sold it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, why not go out and do it again? I mean, the story. Because I I don't remember it that well. Okay. <laughs> and I have an well, I have an old hard copy, <laughs> but back in the hard copy <laughs> terminology, that's how old it is. And um, and uh, yeah. So I mean, I could probably try to dust it off, but you know, it'll be tough. So uh, after that, you took like 10 years before you did another kind of one. Well, yeah, I took, yeah, I took yeah. like uh, four, 14 years. Yeah, 14 years. Yeah. In the middle of that, you uh, almost destroyed your career with Tough Crowd. And then... Uh... Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Almost? <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Um. No, but uh, so it took you a while to get back to that, right? You were yes. still doing stand up. Yeah. But just doing the kind of stand up that you would do. Right. Yeah. I mean, I was doing thematic kind of sort of stuff, but it wasn't right. I didn't officially announce, hey, this is like one man show stuff, you know what I mean? Well, you do, uh, you work out these, these specials, I guess. I don't know. Do you call them specials or just a one man yeah. show? But right next door in the Fat Black Pussycat, and you'll go in there like it's a gym, like you're Rocky, and just keep going until something comes together. How, how long does that normally take you? Uh, like a year. Yeah, know. about a year. A year before you really, but that's, you know, and that's doing it a lot, and going over my notes all day and listening to tapes. It's like, a, it's a real, you know, you have to really be serious about it, you know. I mean, comedy, you know, we didn't get into it because we like to work hard but right um, exactly it turned into quite a toil <laughs> yeah. you know yeah but yeah you have to you know because memorizing is almost harder than writing sometimes you know and the audience doesn't know exactly what they're coming to see a lot of right right so yeah i like, mean yeah he's sitting there reading a legal pad at us yeah there's a lot of d dissatisfied customers <laughs> in the early in the in the early stages <laughs> they have to be into the process <laughs> And you don't know exactly what it's going to be about at first, right? Yeah, I never know. Like, yeah. right now I'm doing one. And exactly. You know, it's sort of, you, it comes out eventually, you know. But, like, the New York one, I knew I wanted to do the history of New York. Like, right. that one was simple. Like, when I'm just, the history of New York, like, I was always dying to just go over 
what New York was, but I didn't know it was going to be about the New York personalities, you know. Dude, there was, uh, my entire family will bring this up to each other all the time because we did not know it was a thing, and yet we'd all experienced it. And you said in school, black girls would always have two different kinds of candy and <laughs> be working both of them. We were looking at each other like, is that everywhere? <laughs> But that was hilarious to me, and uh, <laughs> Italian guys who weren't afraid of anything until it was Froyo. Right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anything new experience, I yeah. forgot about that one. Like, what is that, that's a man? Yeah, oh. well, that was the funniest part to me, that you were backing away from and you literally kind of trans, you were acting <laughs> yeah, for that yeah, one yeah, moment yeah. there. But that's the kind of things I think you've been able to bring out here, and I think a lot of it, and this is, it's almost the exact opposite of where comedy is going right now. You're doing a lot of research in this, particularly the last two. You sure. didn't know a lot about these subjects. What subjects? You mean the, the Constitution? The, the Constitution, the way this whole thing is put together. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, like the New York thing I knew a lot about, right? Yeah. But, yeah, but I mean, the Constitution, I do. I feel like the first, the, there was two shows ago, the unconstitutional one, but... I put one in between so people wouldn't think I was doing the same one. I'm not stupid. Um, no, I'm kidding. But the, uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know a lot about the Constitution. I read all these boring books from like 8, 1900, 1880 about the Constitution. It's interesting. <laughs> these boring books are interesting. Because you realize, because I was always like, why is it the Constitution? Why does everybody, left and right, always love the Constitution? They're always trying to use the Constitution. And then you realize why it was kind of a wild thing. Not necessarily successful, but they were saying like <laughs> the exact opposite of what everybody else had said. Yeah. Which is, what do you think? We want to hear your opinion. And you know what I mean? So you could argue that that was a mistake, but it was a good, it was a noble effort. You think, that, <laughs> you think we'd be happier if there was this one person in oh, charge? Like a king? Of, yeah, like a king or a shah. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> I think a shah would bring a certain respectability. <laughs> I think uh, an imam would be... <laughs> help the dress code. And, um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, one thing about, uh, you know, mid-century Iran, you could leave your doors open. <laughs> um, they always say that about... That's the same as Frank Rizzo in Philly. Hey! <laughs> you know? Well, I did Unconstitutional in Philly for like a month run, and yeah. I swear to God, it was, I won't, it was the greatest, you know what I mean? Just because everybody there was so interested in it. Right. Like even the average Joe on the street, everybody loves the Constitution because it's their, you know, yeah. it's their Times Square. It's the fucking exactly. Liberty Bell. <laughs> Philly, when I was there, the people, it really is, it's like, it's like New York in the 70s. That's probably what inspired... <laughs> It probably inspired New York Story because I was like homesick <laughs> watching people just like, it's just, I don't think it was, it was, a, it was just everybody's fighting in the street. You see hipsters fighting. Right, sure. No other city do the hipsters get out and start swinging in the streets. It's, it's you very true. You have to true. fight in Philly, yeah. There's a, a part of Philly called the Main Line, which is just mansions and it's beautiful and it's, and those people. We've all heard of it, Ron. Yeah, yeah. Those, those people will punch you in the fucking face. <laughs> I mean, they're out in the street. They tell their kids to hit other people. It's really... There's nostalgia when you walk through for the 70s. Yeah. It really does feel like that. It does. I don't even think they have internet there yet, do they? No. no. <laughs> That's true. But, uh, yeah, but I love it. I just love that, you know, that they, they love the Constitution. They're, like, obsessed with it, there, you know? Now you, uh, but you fell in love with it too as you're, as you're doing this because the whole founding fathers thing always right. annoyed me a little bit, like these secular saints that left things. But it's like, it reminds me of like uh, Desi Arnaz with Lucy, you know what I mean? And then yeah. when, when he died, she had to go to Mr. Mooney to get fucking permission. <laughs> like why these people are died? Why, why are we still listening to them? They, when they wrote this thing, they went out and shit next to a tree. Right. It seems like we should be able to update this thing pretty easily now. But they said to update it. I mean, I hate to, you know, but they kept saying, you guys will probably do this every time some big event happens. I'm like, no, we get too busy. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, that's what's so weird is that we don't have constitutional conventions like once every five years. Right. Like, we never have these, like, 
m- these big things. And now it would be impossible. Now, if you wanted to have it, you'd have to shut down just like they did. They kept, they kept the press out significantly out of the Constitutional Convention. Press was kept out. That's what you'd have to do now. You couldn't have anybody around because people would be at every day, 50 opinions, everyone attacking it, Twitter mob, you know, it would sure. just be a nightmare. Yeah, we would not be able to, mo- we can't move forward, and that's why you want to break this. We can, yeah. yeah. We can move forward if we make it a, uh, you know, a very, an underground state, like a, a quasi-police state. Is that so wrong? No. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think that would be great, Colin, I really do. Anyone who disagrees with us, we can cut their hands off. Say what you want about North Korea, but let me tell you. Um... <laughs> what if we did this? What if, you know, we still had the same thing, but there was only, a, a, you know, 13 original states. Right. How about those? There weren't the only... original. There was like five original. Okay, the other five ones copied those ones. Copying. Okay. <laughs> But what if there, everybody, it's all run the same way, but just those 13 states get the vote? <laughs> like, that's funny. You can be a state, but you don't necessarily get a vote. We got it. Well, you know what? That's really, that's so good that I'm mad that I didn't put that in my show. <laughs> but, uh, that's a. <laughs> But yeah, they should, that they should count for more. The 13 should count for more. Yeah, right. Seniority. Yes, of course. It's not, it's not, just because it's called the union, it doesn't mean it's a union. Yeah. <laughs> well, it also annoys me with the senators that, you know, fucking Delaware and Montana have the same amount of senators as California and Florida. Right. It just seems ridiculous to me. But they, but they said that they weren't going to do it unless they did that. That was what it was about. They weren't going to what? They weren't going to be a country. Yeah. You know, we would have gotten swept back into England. Would that be so bad? Probably not. You know, oddly, it seems to have worked for Canada. You know what I mean? They just took their time. Canada is, yeah. Every, yeah. every show I've done, except the New York story, Canada is the answer at the end. <laughs> it's really weird. And you'd think the people of Canada would, like, notice and, like, have me up there. No. no. I... What I just said to you, I've actually had to tell every Canadian. They go, and in true Canadian fashion, they have no emotion about it either way. They're like, oh, really? Like, oh, my God. Well, they're very cold. I mean, they're cold. They are. Right down to the bone. It's they just, are. Yeah, even in the summer. Yeah. You know, they don't thaw out. I know. Look at Bonnie. <laughs> Uh, that's bossroast.com. Bossroast.com. <laughs> Look at Bonnie. I'm not going to forget that. Um, <laughs> so, how would you split this up? Where would we go with this? What are we going to do? The with the United States? Yeah, the United States. Well, I mean, you know, it would be kind of a. I mean, how did they do the uh, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics? You know what I mean? You bust a Kazakh stand, you have a couple. Of, yeah, you try a, 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 a tyrant in one place and a socialist in another, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I haven't really... I mean, I would just try to break it up by personality types, you know? Some people... I would make it a contest because ultimately you do like a five-year try and see which states do the best. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then the other ones, you know... Well, I think Texas is a gimme. I mean, that... Texas I think and California, be, yeah. Yeah, they could... Well, California needs stuff, but Texas doesn't. You know right. what I mean? They right. they really were a country once. I don't know why yeah. they came back in. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they didn't want to come back in. And they're actually, if you go down there, people are like, they're a Texan before they're American. Sure, they you don't know? give, they're ready to break up. Yeah. Most people are. Florida, too. I mean, Florida is basically the, you know, you, when you when you divide it, when you're having a divorce, you have to decide who gets the troubled kid. Right. So it's like, yeah, who wants Florida? He's in and out of, you know. I'll tell you. Force of care and, you know, Florida's going to be a fucking madhouse if we let that go, man. That's going to be like a riot and Sing Sing, man. Yeah. It's going to go nuts. Yeah. They've got a lot of issues. Everybody wants Ohio because they're like the good kid. You right. Know. But, um, yeah, I think we should break up in some form. I mean, this can't go on like this, right? It's going to be a, it's gonna be a war. That's how I feel about it. You think it'll be a a physical war? Yeah. 
Yeah. Right now it's a war by phone, but it's. You know. <laughs> well, here's the thing that's that's very difficult to understand in the country now because we say red states and blue states, right. but the fact is it's kind of blue cities and red country. You know what I mean? Like if you go upstate New York, for right. five minutes, you're sure. in fucking Alabama. Right. Yeah. And forget Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is fucking camouflage wherever you go. Right. I had to take a piss. I waited till I got to Pittsburgh. I ain't going near these white people. They're scaring the shit out of me. So how do we do that when, you know, Houston is a blue town. You know what I mean? What about Dallas? Austin? Never mind Houston. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm not, it's a, it's a division. It's going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of bloodshed. I'm not denying that. You're acting like this is going to be a civil uh, act. It's yeah. going to be a transfer of uh, people. It's, a lot of people die in those things. I, <laughs> I feel like you did a lot of work taking us up to one point. Yeah. And then you left us alone out there. Because With the machetes. Because I'm not an engineer, Ron. I'm a comedian. <laughs> you need civil engineers. I could oversee the project. But when it comes to the fucking nuts and bolts of how to, you know, yeah. it's not that simple. No. Um, but, <laughs> but you're saying it's inevitable whether we want to do this or not, it's going to happen. Well, I, and also in my defense, sometimes you have to say something first and visualize it before it can actually happen. <laughs> I mean, Christopher Columbus had to go to Queen Isabella and go, I want to go over there to India right. for it to happen. You know, you yeah. can't just be like sitting and suddenly you're there. So yeah. this is the first stage. Right. But then remember when he got here, he spread diseases and chopped people's heads off or whatever the fuck. You yeah, know. that's yeah. a risk I'm willing to take. <laughs> on people's lives. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know how else to do it. Like I, my other theory was we do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Red Republican Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Democrat, and Sunday for Libertarians, but... <laughs> That's more than Libertarians have ever had before. <laughs> it's like the only party that has never, yeah. ever been tested. Yeah. You know? And plus, they were all atheists anyway. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. What do they care if it's on Sunday? <laughs> um, You're not completely sold on being an atheist, son. Me, like, no. Yeah. I mean, I am and I'm not. I'm really yeah. not. But I mean, I don't care. But I just don't like that atheists are like the new fucking fundamentalists. Right. Everywhere you go, they're like, hey, man, why do you believe it's God? I don't want to fucking debate the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm not in the mood to debate you. If you don't believe in God, that's fine. If I do, who gives a shit? Just shut up. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Atheists come at you hard these days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have a lot to say. They're like fucking the fundamentalist yeah. Christians. They're, they're the new ones, you know? Yeah. They're zealotry is as bad as anybody they... they... I, and this kind of shows up on your special as well as right now, is that you really don't care for most people. <laughs> well, I mean, I think all good comedians have to have a very healthy hatred of people and themselves to really be a good comedian. But I mean... No, I just feel like I feel like what I feel like what passes for intelligence is, is sad, you know. Yeah. It's like it just nobody says anything except shit that just you know nobody ever like bring like like you said even when you said to me okay what's the plan? It's like yeah what is it? Everybody just knows what's wrong. That's why the one thing I do hate about this country among you know is that everybody just fucking is a Monday morning quarterback. It's just built on the idea that you're allowed to complain. Right. I've never been a big fan of that. You've never no. been a big fan of complaining? No, I've never... <laughs> well... <laughs> no, he's not... Of course, 100% true, but... What I'm saying is, like... Somebody was... I was talking to uh, Ronnie Chang, and it was, I was like, China has the right idea. Shut everybody up, and just... <laughs> Do things for the betterment of uh, the general. And he goes, you wouldn't be able to do your, what you do for a living in China. And I was like, oh, let's shut down the whole fucking society then. <laughs> oh, I couldn't do my act. Well, that means the whole society crumbles. <laughs> Big fucking deal. Um, 
Whoa, stop yeah. the fucking... You know what I mean? You're willing to fall on the sword yes. if the trains run on time. For the great... Like, yeah, exactly. For the good. good for exactly. you. Exactly. I, I see that as heroic. I really do, Colin. Thank you. Yeah. Although I think we'd be lesser without your act. I really do. Well, I'm thank you. about that. Um, but... How was it... It was a cheap pop, but I gave it to you. That's the. I appreciate uh, yeah. it. Yeah. Now the. Uh, I folded my arms like you just yeah. let it happen. <laughs> I might have folded my arms before it happened, which is embarrassing. <laughs> he did that, and I was like this. <laughs> Where's the applause? <laughs> Where's that applause then? Could have been in the old days. You'd be like this. <laughs> no. No. You have to go for the arm folds. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you also bring up the, and what's great about, and I don't really see a lot of other people doing this, but you do give it to the right and the left, you know, pretty equally. But the PC stuff uh, you came back on is like, you can't take it. What do you mean? In, in terms of the, the, the PC culture right. that the left has brought in in the last, I guess, 10 years or so. Oh, yeah. Well, everybody's yeah. talking about that now, right? Yeah. Yeah. But for you, how, how is like doing comedy? changed is it the same is it different oh i mean it's definitely different obviously people you know i mean it's always gonna be it's always it's always different as far as you know what audiences want i mean people get offended by different things over the course of time you know i mean that's natural but there's obvious there's such an influence nowadays to control like it's just a weird orwellian i know it's overused but it's fucking orwellian what goes on now and it's just strange sometimes you know to watch it and just know the, some of the people that even do it, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. weird. Do you think there's anything positive about where we're going with this? Because normally no. when there's a social change, oh. I really don't. No. Because here's the presumption. The presumption is that first of all, the term punching down drives me crazy. Fucking comedy is slap fight. It's play fighting. It's not fucking punching. <laughs> I reject the premise that comedy's punching. I reject it. That's the first thing. I mean. People, and plus, I was around, I was around for the 80s and 90s. It wasn't just these rabid fucking quasi-supremacist guys cursing out the audience and using the N-word. And, you know what I mean? That's not the way comedy was in the 80s or 90s. So it's like, everybody's pretending that they're under the yoke of fucking oppression. And it's just a little bit melodramatic for my taste. I'm not saying there aren't good things about more people doing comedy, more voices being heard, of course. But I'm saying pretending that there was this, like, intimidating presence running around the fucking comedy clubs. Comedians, we're not the fucking alpha males of society, okay? <laughs> Let's calm down, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit, it was a, it was a little bit disingenuous. <laughs> Almost as disingenuous as using the word disingenuous. <laughs> but I mean, so that's the only thing I think. It's like, you know what I mean? I understand people can make a legitimate argument for some things, but everyone's acting like this was, you know, some totalitarian fucking evil state that they manage bravely to <laughs> free themselves from. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a bunch of fucking socially awkward fucking narcissist comedians <laughs> that, you know. Well, I'm, I'm glad to see that you wrestled with that a little bit. <laughs> you went back and forth with it. It came down on but one yeah. side. Well, look, like I always say, it's like, um, yeah, I'm glad there's no, nobody identifies ethnicity or, you know, anyone's religion now in comedy. Like, that was a good, that's really, and since that started to be the rule of comedy, uh, racism has gone down 92%. <laughs> so it's really been effective. That's so great. you're welcome, America. Thank your local comedy club. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like they, you know, they, people try to put comedy like it's this, it's got to be the voice, like it's the tone of a nation and a little bit of the, it's, it, here's a radical thought. Comedy, first and foremost, you're supposed to laugh. Secondly, it's entertainment. And then if you can get your opinion in and say something that's fucking amazing, that's maybe the highest form. But if it's not getting laughs, like doctors first do no harm, comedy first get the laugh. So it's like, you know, people don't come out to, you know, have their fucking traditional and marginalized, reinforced, whatever the fuck, patriarchal, you know what I mean? Right. But then a few people have decided, you don't see what's happening, we'll see it for you. Right. You don't understand the unkind, and it's like, you know, it's, it's too melodramatic for me, it's, you know. 
it's overly, you know, it's just something about it that just hits me as fake, you know. It is, uh, but I, it does seem to be some kind of a weird growing pain that our whole society is going through now, you know. I, I think they want to have good intentions with it, you know, because they all missed the civil rights movement in the 60s, and that was a great place to be, I think, for a, a white comedian. Um, just out, you know what I mean? Just out there like Mort Saul with a paper under your arm. Right, you know right. What I mean? it was yeah, pretty... but once again, when Lenny Bruce went up against the Catholic Church, that was fucking dangerous. Right. That was 1960. Okay? It's the Catholic Church, not exactly, it's low hanging fruit. Yeah, I'm not saying, days. no pun intended. <laughs> but I think, I think. You wanted to use the plural fruits. That's yeah. where. But I'm just saying, once again, we can say whatever the fuck we want. And nobody's yeah. coming. The fucking cops don't come in the door for calling Catholic Church fruits. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, exactly. And I'm not right. saying you can't make fun of them. I'm just saying people are very selective about what they're going to, you know, pick on religion wise and everything else wise. Right. And it's just phony, you know what I mean? Yeah. I almost said disingenuous again. You people are lucky. <laughs> You feel lucky. I was dying to say it. So I seem intelligent. You know, if you say disingenuous, people go, ooh, he's ooh, intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> say phony, they're like, ah, he could be my Uncle Al. You know? All right, so you're looking at your next thing that you're doing, but you haven't formed it yet. You haven't put it together. It takes a while to do this. You're over in what's known as the CQ room next door. Yes. You're in there. Just trying to hammer it out. Do you have a plan? Do you have an idea? Yeah. Well, it's sort of, you know, like yeah. I said, it's not, it might sound familiar, but <laughs> basically it's about the fact that whatever society you put together so far in history, there's going to be bullying by whoever has the power. So right now, the power is the tyranny of the mob, the Internet. Because I see all the Democratic candidates, they're scared of the Internet. Right. They're scared of the fucking, you can just see it. They just agree with everything because they're thinking, I don't want to get fucking hammered. And yeah. the, new, the media is scared of the Internet. People say the media has power. No, the fucking Internet. It's the ultimate democracy. But as I say in the new show, not to give away the lines, but... <laughs> uh, I'm very greedy like that. But... Yeah. Um, by the way, anybody, any of us could spend five bucks and want you to put this together, so... Yeah, sure, right. You're right. But, um... Fair enough, Ron. <laughs> now I wish I smoked again. <laughs> smoke. And he, not only did they smoke on talk shows in the 60s, they got to cross their legs and nobody complained. <laughs> that is true. They had all the time in the world, didn't they? No yes, matter they what, did. They came on that talk show and just like, wait a minute, Johnny. Yeah. You really want to take a nice long hit off this Marlboro. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it was a better time. Ah. <laughs> You used to smoke, right? Hmm? You smoke cigarettes, right? I smoke cigars. You, did you smoke cigarettes, I mean? Never. I smoked cigars, but it didn't work out. I ended up, I quit cigarettes. And I said, I'm going to smoke cigars. You don't inhale the cigars. I was up to a box a day inhaling them. I was just living in denial. And I couldn't even, I could yeah. barely walk. I said, cigars, they're really powerful. Yeah. So when you inhale them, well, it was bad if spending you all smoke my money. 20 cigars a day, yeah. 20 a day. 20 a day, this fucking big. <laughs> like three packs, four packs, six a day. So I had to quit that. Yeah. A little bit of addictive personality. I yeah, think. I guess, yeah. yeah. I guess. That's why I got into comedy. I'm addicted to fun. <laughs> oh. That's That sounds like one of your tweets. That, uh... uh it's... I don't know if anyone's ever used Twitter like you before, <laughs> yeah. but there's no one else that somebody has said to me, hey, I want you to take a look at this tweet. And then we sit and laugh like we were looking at the far side in 1978. <laughs> we're passing the phone around. Yeah. You're such a fucking ball buster. Thanks, yeah. yeah. I really found it. I really found it. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, somebody on Twitter actually pointed this out to me once. When I was a kid, we, and there'd be the boys down at the corner. So I'd lean out the window, just, you know, with the lights off. And I'd yell to the guys walking up to the club, ah, you didn't get laid, you fucking <laughs> asshole. And I would just like heckle. Be like, Who the fuck said that? I'll kick your ass. Like, You're not kicking anyone's ass. And I would just like heckle them. With my, the window was shut like here. And it just beat my face. Like, Who the fuck said that? 
And then, um, and I never, somebody on Twitter pointed out, oh, that's what you do at Twitter. I was like, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> Just an asshole. I, I, I actually <laughs> picture you as a seven-year-old with the same exact voice <laughs> that you have now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you like to stir up a little bit of shit. That's fun for you. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I like being sincere on Twitter, you know. I'm yeah. Just... And it is true that a lot of people are too crude on Twitter. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people just cur they just indulge themselves too much, and it just infuriates me, so then I get even cleaner. But now everybody's in on the joke. When I first started, I would just say, let's keep it PG, you know, let's keep it. And guys would be like, you're a fucking sellout. You're a fucking, I go, hey, come on. You, you like those comedians that curse? I'm just not into that anymore. I'm like, fuck you, fuck you. Uh, and I go, you know, you call that humor? I don't find it funny. Fuck you. But now everybody knows I'm just a dick, you know. so goddamn funny it's just, it's just but i gave it up yeah. because everybody's in on the damn joke now i can't yeah. get it i can't get uh, you know well head over to tiktok and enjoy yourself it's a whole new platform <laughs> <laughs> jeffrey epstein turned me on to it i go where's it all what's happening now i'm not keeping up uh, <laughs> You know, uh, you you brought up uh, the heart attack, and then also, which I, it kind of surprised me that you would even go public about that because you don't like. I don't think a lot of people know a lot about you, but you went, you brought up the heart attack, and then on TV you announced that you were engaged, and everybody was like, "What the fuck? <laughs> what what brought all this on to go a little more public with yourself?" Um, but I mean, I've never been private about it. It's just nobody, you know what I mean? I cared. Well, well done. It's, up to this nobody, point, nobody cared. cared. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody cared. Yeah. And it's like you know, my whole act used to be every confessional thing. It's not like right. I, I didn't do that, but I was. That's why I went into this other shit because I was like done with that stuff, and people barely cared about that stuff. I mean, when I used to, my whole act was you know I did this and that. It yeah. was in the eighties and nineties. But I mean, so yeah, I don't give a shit. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, getting married or or you know, I just don't talk too much about certain I don't want other people to feel like you fucking talk about you know what I mean like yeah. it's weird when you bring up other shits you know what I mean not that I'm afraid of the wife <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be the biggest swerve if you started to do the old ball and chain the material. old ball and chain <laughs> <laughs> no I mean it's so it's you know and I'm, I, it's so different than that stuff. I mean, it's not like she, I come home and fucking Bachelor in Paradise is on every night or anything like that. No. Unbelievable. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying women have the worst fucking taste in TV. You put on Taxi Driver. What's this? <laughs> it's fucking Taxi Driver. That's what it is. <laughs> I don't mean to assign gender specific. <laughs> Indulge me, I'll be gone soon. <laughs> that may be the most defensible thing that you've said all night. I think, I'm sitting here going, yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. We, she's, there's a gruff lady yelling, not yes. she's breaking. She's slowly yeah. breaking a bottle to stab us. Yeah, is that true? Name three <laughs> fucking Harvey Keitel movies right now. <laughs> you can't pick Bad Lieutenant. <laughs> no, but you're happy. You're happy at this point in your life because this is really. In a lot of ways, this is the prime of your life, dude. And there's it's... nothing I hate. Let me yeah. explain something. Yeah. Ron. Yeah. Nothing I hate more than people, you know, re basically knowing me. And you know yeah. me. And you're a very insightful, intuitive guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Fucking amazing. And you can say, do you sense I'm fucking happy? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
I just don't know what prompted yeah. you to say that right but, then. You don't seem to think you're gonna get has to reassure yourself. Like, yeah. but you're happy. Are you happy? Are you happy? I mean, what the hell are we doing here? <laughs> Let me withdraw that last question. I've been going through a lot of blood sugar problems, so every once in a while, I'll just say something so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm just saying the run that. By you the did, way, yeah. that's what I call a fucking man's man that just took the hit and said, "Let me withdraw that question." <laughs> An asshole that has his own show would be like, "Oh, but he," and try to attack CQ. But instead, he's like, "Let me withdraw that question." That's why he's the fucking greatest. <laughs> Yeah, you go over to fucking Jim and Sam, then we'll let you get a fucking... You know, scumbags. Yeah. <laughs> you know they're our friends, right? You understand that? Now, Voss, on the other hand... Let me explain something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What was, uh, I, I just want to quickly just go back to the early, what made you even think comedy, even when you were a kid? Was there somebody or? Well, no, something? but I was like, uh, I was just, uh, like I was, anybody I grew up with said I, I peaked at 13. I was funny, <laughs> because when I was in junior high school and yeah. grade school, like it was a very, you know, mixed area, all black, Puerto Rican, white, like that's why I love New York stories, like I was looking back at that. But everybody would just like, you know, it was kind of wild in school and stuff. And I just started getting laughs like early on. And I got fucking addicted to it. So by the time I got into comedy, I was, I was, I was, I, was, I, I never, I've never been as funny as I was when I was 13. I was just, <laughs> it's been anticlimactic. Right. Maybe, so like maybe. Constitution. Yeah. What am I doing? But here's what I'm thinking. Maybe it wasn't you, it was the audience. If you go out and just start and work in front of children. Yeah. There's a lot of youngsters yeah, out there. It was probably a lot of simpler material. You're right. <laughs> yeah. But I do. I honestly think that those kids that you grow up with shape you as much as your parents. You know, that's what I agree consider, 100%. You know what I mean? So that's what you and most of us still consider funny. You know what I mean? Those guys that right. we hung out with. And women. Yeah. Some black. <laughs> Covering all the bases, bro. Yeah. But those are the people that you're like, that's that's a sense of humor. You know what right. I mean? Right. That's it. And then you try to do this to somehow bring that out to everybody. Yeah, you try to duplicate, but it's but then when you first start doing Santa, you're like, oh fuck. This is a whole different ballgame. You right. know what I mean? And then you you know trying to trying to convey your personality and make it funny, it's, it's horrible. Well, it's also yeah, because because uh, immediately you will start to try to act like a comedian instead of the guy hanging out yep. with your friends. Yeah, you know. So you're like who's ever on the Tonight Show at the time. You yeah. meet and you see that in kids all the time, like open micers and stuff. And you come in and they're doing you know some version of the tell, and I'm like. You know how fucking hard that is, right? Right. Like you, you don't want to. Right. You, you don't. You don't want to yeah. act like you're a tell. You don't write well enough. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Do that, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, but it wasn't like, oh, there was some comic out there or whatever that made you want to do this. No, but when I was like, when again, when I was like eight years old, nine years old, I'd watch this show. Can you top this? And there was a guy named Jan Murray. Oh, He's yeah, an old sure. school guy with a cigarette, fucking gold bling. One of those like real, you know, yeah. just spray tan Jews. Apologies to the boss. <laughs> Apologize to boss. But. <laughs> and I would just watch him smoking on TV. I was like nine years old. And he's just, he'd do these jokes. And he'd just be like taking over the room. I was like, fuck it. Yeah. And that looks like the fucking life, man. <laughs> You know, I wanted to smoke and be in nightclubs yeah. and, yeah. you know. You're the only human being who's ever brought up Jan Mary's name when it came to influences. And yes. 
I mean, even Jan Murray did not want to be. Well, it's you funny know, because I met Jan Murray and I was like, Jan, I'm a big. And he goes, Have a nice holiday and walked away. I don't even know. And it was right around. It was right around Christmas. I felt like it was a shot. And he was trying to say you're a Christian. Get the fuck out of here. Have a nice holiday. I read between the lines. Yeah. But, uh, but I also like David Brenner. When sure. I was a kid, I remember seeing David Brenner on The Tonight Show. Yeah. And he had this, le this brown leather jacket, open shirt, chains, you know, yeah. in the 70s. And I was like, look at this fucking badass, a shag haircut. Yeah. And he's up there doing his jokes, but you can tell he's still like a cool dude, you know? Yeah. You know, and then so I kind of liked him. He was like, you would see David Brenner on The Tonight Show, on Merv, on Mike Douglas, yep. on all in the same week. Yes. You're like, how much fucking material I know. does this dude have? You know? Yeah. Because there wasn't that many comedians. It was right before the big boom. That's right. Where there was a lot of young comedians. So he was like the young guy that the old That's guys right. could go to. Yeah. You know? Like, what are the kids are up? And they couldn't put Pryor and Carlin on because no, they were just not. too fucking dangerous for those shows. Yeah. yeah. I, if you brought Pryor on the show, you could be yeah. fired. You Pryor. know what I mean? <laughs> Prior and Carlin, they were just too, they were too, you know what I mean? They were just, yeah. they, they would mock those shows and, you know. You were a Carlin guy? Was it, uh, yeah. yeah. Of course. Was um, Class Clown, was that the album for you? Because that it was the Catholic one. It wasn't yeah. just the album for me. It was the album, yeah. it was the album that influenced, because I watched all my parents and all my uncles and aunts that really lived, that they were the George Carlin era. Yeah. And I watched them sit there and listen to the album all the time. And just sit there and it was like, oh, it was all the their their childhood, their pain, and all that, and laugh. And it was like the whole bit was like I think like seven minutes. I thought it was like an hour. Right. Seven minutes that just fucking healed or whatever temporarily relieved so many people, like Irish Catholic people. Yeah. I was like it was fucking impressive. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was like the first time when you were a kid and you listened to him talking about the Catholic Church and, and all that, and you're like, holy shit. Maybe I'm not wrong. This yeah. whole time, I'm praying my ass off all night, holding on. I'm a bad person. I'm a bad person. Yeah. And then you hear a, a man, and you're like, oh, it doesn't fucking make sense. But, you know? Yes, but he did it with love back right. then. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, he did it with like a certain memory show with the good priest and how they taught you to think and the yeah. Father Rivera and all that stuff. So it was kind of interesting. It wasn't just him just attacking the church. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was a freedom to it. Yeah. Have you ever met George? I was intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he came on tough crap. Yeah. That is like, that was one of those guys that when you met him, it was like, because you can meet almost anybody in comedy, but when you met George, it was like, I've walked into the fucking album now. You know what I mean? I've I, walked into that. I disagree because yeah. once, once I realized that like Joe DeRosa, George said hi, he talked to every open micer on the fucking phone for like 10 years. <laughs> that by the time I met George, I was like, fuck, George. Yeah, right. I wanted him to have a vibe like me and you, George. <laughs> and said, you know, you heard about the DeRosa great story. No. You didn't hear that story? I, when he well, starts talking, I stop listening. <laughs> Whoa, no. By the way, I only know that because that'll hurt him because... The last time we did something, you walked in on an unmasked, you heard his name, and you said it destroyed him. Yes, that's right. He goes, but he had, he got this, George Carlin came to him one time, and he's talking, he goes, keep kicking him in the nuts. He goes, you got any advice from George? He goes, keep kicking him in the nuts. So Joe's like, fucking Carlin, give me advice. So he gets KK, he gets the initials, KK in the D, whatever, yeah. on his arm, tattoo. So he's like, yeah, I got the, and he's, and he's on, uh, you know, Opie and Anthony one time, and he goes, yeah, I got the tattoo. And so everybody starts calling in all these fucking half comedian or whatever. That's how he said goodbye to everybody. So now Joe, Joe has changed the tattoo. Joe, Joe is falling asleep every night, looking at his fucking arm, going, it was a tough set, but you know what? And, uh, you might as well have said, take care, kid. <laughs> It could have just been see a fuck face across yeah. there. It might as well have yeah. been, yeah. It's very funny because I, I talked to Joan Rivers one time and she said she was a kid down in the village and she's doing stand-up and uh, Lenny Bruce sent a note to her that said, uh, you were right, they were wrong. 
And she goes, 30 years later, she's still carrying a note. And she tells Carlin, George Carlin, I got this note. And he goes, yeah, I got one, too. <laughs> so... Yeah. I mean, if it works, it works. Keep <laughs> kicking them in the nuts, uh, everybody. Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, I'm going to go back to Tough Crowd for one second, too, if I can. Because right. I know... I've gone back and watched that show. I don't know what the hell you guys were doing. It was really one fucking edgy sh crazy show yeah did you realize it at the time are you like this is gonna you know be this thing that i know young comics that come in here all the time and that's the reason why because they watched Tough right Crowd. yeah yeah i mean i wanted it to no i mean I, I i wanted it to be like it was just the beginning of what quote unquote political correctness was kind of but it was like i was watching all these comedians on stage every night i'd go to the cellar because you have to walk through the room to pee Right. You're watching everybody on stage, you're all talking about every forbidden topic and getting laughs from the crowd. So it's like, this is still comedy. And then upstairs at the table, everybody's free associating. Just So I said, I want this to be, my whole idea was, it's going to be a show, like no applause, nobody's allowed to applaud, that was the fucking rule when I came out. Anyway, no applause, no no trying to get clapped there, it wasn't called clapped to them, but it's supposed to either off the cuff as much as possible and make it like funny and real. So that was the whole idea, was... To not be, you know, program and prepackaged stuff, yeah. and then um, you know that part succeeded. Um, the no applause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even think that should have been a big worry for you, bringing those guys out there. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, the the whole point was for it not to be like this fabricated showbiz, you know, comedy and everyone's being slick. The whole point was you're being funny or not, and that was supposed to be it. But yeah. You know, that part worked, like I said, the way... That part that worked, I wanted, there was a lot of things I, I probably would have done differently, but, yeah. I mean, I, the intention was that, to make it authentic, like you was hanging out, you know, and not forcing people... I mean, people would wrote, but they wrote that day on right. the topics, and a lot of people would just improvise, and I wanted to be, I wanted to be like that. You know? Because of that, a, young, a lot of young comedians are afraid to go in and sit at the table. They're afraid to go near the table because they don't feel like they're... Well, they're not anymore. To, the tables yeah. have been gone for years. But, but that yeah. doesn't mean that they're not afraid of it. Right. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not always telling people. I'm like, uh, Patrice died. Yeah. You're, uh, you're safe now. Patrice died. <laughs> Look, Patrice died and Nick moved. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine to sit yeah. at the table. And, and he moved to Georgia, which is exactly the same as dying. <laughs> By the way, Nick just doesn't even understand how to pull a punch, does he? Like Nick, I, no. Yeah. No. No. Even back then. Uh, but, but the jokes are there, and it's just so it's damn Hilarious. Funny. And I, you know, I will say this. I've been watching some specials, and I'm not going to say anyone. I almost think that podcasting, right, has hurt specials a little bit, because guys are going out, having fun, talking to their audience, but I don't think they're putting together a special... The way you put together right you try to get laugh 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 laugh, yeah. laugh 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 and have it go somewhere right that's almost gone you know yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can go out on stage and have a fun rant you know what i mean yeah. but that's not the same as joke joke yeah joke yeah. joke joke and yeah. oh i didn't see that coming you know yeah well that's why my subjects i pick are so boring that i have to have jokes <laughs> all the way through because or else people start turning on me <laughs> that's how I keep myself disciplined because yeah. you bring up you know if you think about the Federalist Papers and people like fuck <laughs> you You're like hold on <laughs> hold on trust me give me two minutes I'm going somewhere with this I will say this on your last special you didn't talk nearly as fast as the special before yeah I mean you crammed like I felt like I probably lost a little, like 40% of the words yeah. and I should have got a little money back watching this but was there a reason that you kind of changed your delivery with that well it's funny my director kept saying slow down slow it down like every day yeah. to him i was like jesus yeah so that's the reason yeah <laughs> no i mean i wish i had done it my whole career yeah because here's another thing 
about comedy. Yeah. I wish I had been slow my whole career because I feel like you're conveying a message when you talk really slow. Like everything you say is so fucking important. <laughs> and I was always like, blah, 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 like fast, just trying to get to the joke. And you know, it's sort of probably an Irish thing too. Yeah. You're like, hold on, hold on, let me forget that. <laughs> It's, Irish it, people talk. Yeah, the same way they eat. It's that whole thing yes. of let me put yeah. my arm out here and yeah. shovel as quick as I can <laughs> before one of my seven siblings comes <laughs> along <laughs> and grabs a potato, and that's the yeah. end of me. I, I get nothing else tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but the, your delivery is uniquely yours, and I think the way you, you even put together jokes is uniquely yours. And that's why I like, was always surprised where you're like, Oh, Seinfeld directed this one because I think most people wouldn't understand where you guys intersect, but to, but to you two, yeah, you do. Easily. Oh, I mean, he, yeah, I mean, not easily. No, yeah. I, I don't think anyone works easily with anybody in comedy. But I mean, yeah, I mean, he definitely has a totally his style is completely opposite of mine. He likes to work on one thing for a long time and just try to love, and I like to just. You know, change the subject all at in the, the same time. I like to I like to change subjects in the middle of the joke. <laughs> and, but yeah, no, he really understands the right. structural stuff. He, you know, it's the same idea, which is to get to the jokes. When did you guys meet? Was it the seventies, the eighties? When did you? We met in the uh, in like eighty seven or eighty eight. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've known him since since before he was you know that famous. I mean, he was still already a big comedian. He was like the biggest comedian of. Yeah, Local he was the people. biggest club comedian. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it went from like Leno was the biggest club right. comedian, and then he moved up bigger, and then it was like Seinfeld. Yeah. You, you would have to say to people, "No, Jerry Seinfeld," you, and they'd be like, "Who?" Right. Seinfeld, you know. But right. everyone in comedy knew. Him, That's right. You know? And then uh, you know that show happened and just fucking went crazy. I feel like that show made him even bigger. Yes. <laughs> Just my opinion. Yeah. And folks, you wonder why we call this show Unmasked. <laughs> the one and only Colin Quinn, folks. Thank you, folks. Show has ended.